or bring it to the Most High. So tonight's topic is called the fear of water. The fear of water. You might be wondering, what kind of a topic is that? Take close attention, take notes, take notes. Okay, let's open up with the book of Exodus chapter 8 verse 16. Exodus chapter 8 verse 18. Verse 16. Again, tonight's topic is called the fear of water. The fear of water. Exodus 8 verse 16. Let's start there. Exodus chapter 8 verse 16. Come on. And the Lord said unto Moses, Say unto Aaron, Stretch out thy rod, and smite the dust of the land, that it may become life throughout all the land of Egypt. So now this is um, one of the plagues. This is the third plague that was brought upon the Egyptians. Life. You understand? The Most High God brought forth life to destroy and plague the Egyptians. Okay? To show us that whatever God is they worship, with the, whatever God they worship, which is Beelzebub, you understand? Is there is no, is no God at all. That's what the Lord was trying to show us. Go ahead. And they uh -huh. did so. For Aaron stretched out his hand with his rod and smote the dust of the earth, and it became lice in man and in beast. All the dust of the land became lice throughout all the land of Egypt. So now the most high God he used Aaron, Aaron stretched out his hand with his rod and smote the dust of the earth, and it became lice in man and in beast. It says, All the dust of the land became lice throughout all the land of Egypt. From that, the most high God created light. Okay, come on. And the magicians did so with their enchantments to bring forth lies, mm -hmm. but they could not. Come on. So there were lies upon man and upon beast. So now the magicians, which is today will be called the Sangomas or the scientists, they could not what they could not bring forth light. You understand? So it says there was life upon man and upon beast. So let's see what is life. Okay, let's see what it looks like. You know what? Keep reading. Jump down to verse 20. Read verse 20. We're going to deal with the third and the fourth plague. Let's get to the fourth plague. I'm going to come back to the dealing with life because that's really where I want to focus on. Read verse 20 now. Exodus chapter 8 verse 20. Come on. And the Lord said unto Moses, Rise up early in the morning and stand before Pharaoh. Lo, he cometh forth to the water and say unto him, Thus saith the Lord, let my people go that they may serve me. Let my people go that they may serve me. The most high God is about to what? Is about to launch another attack, another plague. Okay, come on. Else, if thou will not let my people go, behold, I will send swarms of flies upon thee and mm -hmm. upon thy servants and upon thy people and into thy houses. And Wait. the houses of the Egyptians shall be full of swarms of flies and also the ground whereon they are. So now the Lord is saying, listen, I'm going to deploy a swarm of flies upon all the land of Egypt. You understand? The Most High God created new flies especially for the Egyptians to destroy them. Because one of the gods that they worship was what? Fly. Lord of the flies. Another. Beelzebub. Okay? The Lord of uncleanness. Life is also God of uncleanness. You understand? Fly. God of uncleanness. Read on. And I will save her that day the land of Goshen, in which my people dwell, that no swarms of flies shall be there. Mm -hmm. To the end, thou mayest know that I am the Lord in the midst of the earth. Because remember, we were in Goshen. The most High God is saying, right? Read that verse again. Read it, right? Verse 22 again. Exodus chapter 8, verse 22. And I will save her in that day the land of Goshen. You see what the Lord is saying? He says he will sever in that day the land of Goshen. Remember, we're in the land of Goshen. How did we get there? Because of Joseph, our forefather. You understand? That's how we ended up staying in the land of Goshen. So when the Most High God was plaguing the Egyptians, where our forefathers, we were in the land of Goshen, the plague did not affect us. Neither did it affect, affect us, or not only that, it didn't, it didn't affect our cows and our beasts as well. You understand? But on the side of the Egyptians, the most High God was jacking them up. Okay, come on. In which my people dwell, mm -hmm. that no swarms of flies shall be there. Go ahead. To the end, thou mayest know that I am the Lord in the midst of the earth. Read. 
and I will put a division between my people and thy people. Tomorrow shall this sign be. Shall, Jesus, tomorrow shall this sign be. The Lord says, I'm going to save the Egyptians from, uh, I'm going to save the children of Israel from the Egyptians. You understand? There's going to be a clear distinction who the Lord is plaguing and who the Lord is dealing with. Read. And the Lord did so. And there came a grievous swarm of flies into the house of Pharaoh and into his servants' houses and into all the land of Egypt. Mm -hmm. The land was corrupted by reason of the swarm of flies. So the most High God corrupted the land by swarm of flies. Watch this. Let's see what type of flies were these and what did they do when they plagued the Egyptians. Give me that in Wisdom of Solomon, in the Apocrypha. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 16 verse 9. Watch this. This is the type of flies that the Lord launched upon the Egyptians. And when he did that, this is what he did, with what they did to them. Start of verse 8. Wisdom of Solomon 16, verse 8. We're going to read through verse 9. Come on. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 16, verse 8. Mm -hmm. And in this thou madest thine enemies confess that it is thou who deliverest from all evil. Because our enemies confess that, listen, there's a, there's a God in Israel. Which God is that? The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. The God of our forefathers. Read. For them the bitings of grasshoppers and flies killed. You see that thing? So the type of flies that the Lord launched upon the Egyptians were biting them and they were killing them. What type of fly can kill you? That's the type of flies that the Lord used you to destroy the Egyptians. It says what? Read that part again. For them, the bitings of grasshoppers and flies killed. So grasshoppers were biting them and flies were biting them and they were killing them. Read. Neither was there found any remedy for their life. Meaning what? They could not be cured. They, they, remember, the, the magicians could not do nothing. The magician could not replicate life, nor bring forth fly. Go ahead. For they were worthy to be punished by such. They were worthy to be punished by such creatures that the Lord created just for them, for their destruction. Okay? Now, let's go back now. Let's go back to Exodus chapter 8. Read verse 16 again. I'm going to deal with the, the light, okay? I'm going to launch into that. Read that. Read that again. Exodus chapter 8, verse 16. Read. And the Lord said unto Moses, Say unto Aaron, Stretch out thy rod, and smite the dust of the land, that it may become lice throughout all the land of Egypt. Mm -hmm. And they did so. For Aaron stretched out his, his hand with his rod, and smote the dust of the earth, and it became lice in men, and in beast. Come on. All the dust of the land became lice throughout all the land of Egypt. Mm -hmm. And the magicians did so with their intentments to bring forth lice, but they could not. So there were lice upon men and upon beast. So there were lice upon men and upon beast. So the Most High was jacking the Egyptians. Now let's see what life looks like. Okay. Watch this. Let's go to Google. I'm going to share my screen so you can see what life looks like, okay? Watch this. Now look at that. This right here, this is life, okay? This creature that you see here, this insect, this is head life. This is the one that made your, your hair, your dandruff and all that. That's life right there, okay? This is body life. The one that makes your body to itch and all that is because there's life. You've got body life. You understand? Yes. Then... You've got another one, which is pubic life. So now what you're looking at here is, um, is life. You see, this is the insect that the Lord used to plague the Egyptians. You understand? You've got head life, body life, and pubic life. The pubic life is the one that for the sisters, it sits between your legs, your vagina, your, you know, you understand? That? For the men, it sits between your legs, your rod and all that. You find yourself itching between your your legs and all that mm -hmm, is because you might be having pubic life, okay? So the Most High God made sure that he deployed all of this on men and on beasts. All of them, they were having head, body, and pubic life. That's what the Lord did. Read that again, verse 18. Exodus chapter 8, verse 18. Exodus chapter 8, verse 18. Read. And the magicians did so with their enchantments to bring forth lice, but mm -hmm. they could not. So there were lice upon men and upon beasts. 
There were lights upon men and upon beasts. There were lights upon men and upon beasts. Now, I'm going to deal with that because remember, this is what the Lord brought upon the Egyptians, right? Okay, so we were in Egypt and guess what? We left, you understand, when the Most High launched, after the Most High launched the final attack on the Egyptians, that's when we left, you understand? On the night of the Passover, that's when we left. Get that in Exodus 4, Exodus 12, read verse 29. Watch this, read verse 11, Exodus 12, verse 11, then we're going to jump down. Exodus chapter 12, verse 11. Read. And thus shall you eat it with your loins girded, your shoes on your feet, and mm -hmm. your staff in your hand. And ye shall eat it in haste. It is the Lord's Passover. It is the Lord's Passover. So this Passover right here, this particular Passover, we ate it in haste. You understand? Because we were what? We were being rushed out of Egypt. The most that God was delivering us out of the land of Egypt, the land of Pharaoh. So that's why it says you must eat it in haste because we was what? We was on the run. You understand? We're about to get delivered. That's why this particular Passover, we ate it, we ate it in haste. Okay? Um, jump down to verse 14. Exodus chapter 12, verse 14. You know what? Read 13 and 14 together. Come on. Exodus chapter 12, verse 13. And the blood shall be to you for a token upon the houses where ye are. Mm -hmm. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you. And the plague shall not be upon you to destroy you when I smite the land of Egypt. So the plague did not touch us because we're in the land of Goshen. Not only that, but the blood that we, 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 we strike the blood on the, on the side, on the, on the doorposts. You understand? The blood of lambs. The most that God commanded us to, to you know, slaughter lambs. Get the blood and strike it on the two side coasts of our door so that when the death angel passes over, then guess what? None of our houses were smitten by what? By the plagues. Okay? Read. And this day shall be unto you for a memorial. And ye shall keep it a feast to the Lord throughout your generations. Ye shall keep it a feast by an ordinance forever. He says, You shall keep it for a feast by an ordinance forever. That's why tonight is the last day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread because it's a seven-day celebration. Not only that, it is a Sabbath. No buying, no selling, but you can cook on this day because it is a feast, okay? It's not the seventh-day Sabbath. You can cook, but you cannot buy and sell, okay? No working. Read on. Seven days shall you eat unleavened bread. Mm -hmm. Even the first day you shall put away leaven out of your houses. Stop right there. So it says, seven days you shall eat unleavened bread. The first day you shall put what? It says, even the first day you shall put away leaven out of your houses. That's why in all our houses, we don't have anything. Do you know that we don't have anything that is what leaven in it that you can eat? Meaning what? Bread. If you have bread in your house, it must be bread that does not have yeast in it. Okay? Crumbs and all that. But you can't, the bread, the only bread that you must have in your house is the unleavened bread, bread that is without yeast. Anything that is with yeast, you must, it must not be in your house, okay? For the seven days that we were on the feet of unleavened bread, that must not be in your houses. Go ahead. For whosoever eateth leavened bread from the first day until the seventh day, that soul shall be cut off from Israel. That is, a, that soul shall be cut off from Israel, meaning what? The most that God says, he will put you to death. He will destroy you. So I know some of you are new. You have never observed the Feast of Unleavened Bread before, but this is a school you are here to learn. Okay, come on. And in the first day, there shall be a holy convocation. And in the seventh day, there shall be a holy convocation to you. So the first day of the Feast of the Passover is the Sabbath. The last day also, which is tonight, is that we will also be what? A Sabbath, right? No manner of work shall be done in them. Mm -hmm. Save that which every man must eat, that only may be done of you. Go ahead. And ye shall observe the feast of unleavened bread. Ye shall observe so the it, feast of unleavened. Hold on. Ye shall observe the feast of unleavened bread, which is what we're doing right now. Come on. For in this self same day have I brought your armies out of the land of Egypt. Mm -hmm. Therefore, shall you observe this day in your generations by an ordinance forever. You see that thing? That's why we every year we observe the Feast of the Passover because it is a law that saves the law. The most like God 
commanded us to observe the Passover or the Feast of Unleavened Bread, not Easter. Easter is of the devil. We don't celebrate that. Okay. Now jump down to verse 29. Exodus chapter 12, verse 29. Mm -hmm. And it came to pass that at midnight, the Lord smote all the firstborn in the land of Egypt. From the firstborn of Pharaoh that sat on his throne unto the firstborn of the captive that was in the dungeon and Wait. all the firstborn of cattle. Mm -hmm. And Pharaoh rose up in the night, he and all his servants and all the Egyptians. And there was a great cry in Egypt for there was not a house where there was not one dead. You see that thing? Because the most High God is most all the first bones of the Egyptians. Whether you were 50 years old, 60 years old, or 8 years old, if you were the first born in your house, you were put to death on the, in that night. You understand? So that was a great cry in Egypt because all the first bones were put to death by the most High God. That's the God we serve. The God we serve is the one that put, put nations to death for our sake. For us to get delivered. That is the God we say, the God of Israel. You understand? Now, the reason why I'm going over this is so that I can show you that this on this night at midnight, we left Egypt. You understand? After midnight, because midnight the Lord smote all the first born, that's when we left. Okay. So now we came out of Egypt. Okay. Give me Leviticus 18, verse 1. When we came out of Egypt, the most High God used Moses to teach us the law. Watch this. Because in Egypt, what was we doing? We were worshiping their gods. We were following their customs because Egypt was the power, the most powerful kingdom on earth during that time. So Egypt was like America today, which is the powerful, the most powerful nation on earth, which is the United States today. Back then, it was Egypt. Egypt was just like America it is this day. Okay? Leviticus 18, verse 1. Watch this. Leviticus chapter 18, verse 1. Read. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel and say unto them, I am the Lord your God. Mm -hmm. After the doings of the land of Egypt, where you know he dwelt. Before you do that, remember at this point, we are in the wilderness. Okay. Hold this. Give me the book of Numbers. Okay. Give me the book of Numbers, chapter 3, verse 1. Numbers 3, read verse 1 for me. Numbers, chapter 3, verse 1. Mm-hmm. These also are the generations of Aaron and Moses in the day that the Lord spake with Moses in Mount Sinai. You see that thing? The most that God spoke with Moses and Aaron in Mount Sinai. We was in the wilderness at that time. We were in the wilderness. Okay? So the, mo mo the most that God is speaking to Moses and Aaron to speak to us. Give me numbers one and one. Numbers, the one verse one. Mm-hmm. And the Lord spake unto Moses in the wilderness of Sinai. You see, it says, the Lord spake unto Moses in the wilderness of Sinai. We were in the wilderness at this time. Go ahead. In the tabernacle of the congregation, on the first day of the second month, in the second year, after they were come out of the land of Egypt, saying. So now we are in the wilderness, okay, in Mount Sinai. Moses, the Lord is using Moses and Aaron to relay the message to us of what we need to do and how we must conduct ourselves, no longer following the customs of the Egyptians. No more. Okay? Go back to Leviticus now. Okay? Leviticus, come on. Leviticus chapter 18, verse 3. Mm -hmm. After the doings of the land of Egypt, wherein he dwelt, shall ye not do. And after the doings of the land of Canaan, whither I bring you, shall ye not do. Neither right. shall ye walk in their ordinances. Mm -hmm. Ye shall do my judgments and keep mine ordinances to walk therein. I am the Lord your God. So the Lord is saying, listen, the garbage that you are doing in Egypt, all the gods that you are worshipping, the idols, following their customs, being unclean. Because we were unclean in Egypt. We didn't even dress the right way. Of course, the men, we were dressed, we were, we, we wore dresses in Egypt. You understand? We dressed like them. That's why now the Lord is saying, listen, you are no longer going to look like the Egyptians. Neither will you dress like them. Neither will you follow the customs that you used to follow when you were in Egypt as slaves. So now he's saying what? Read verse 4 again. Leviticus chapter 18 verse 4. Mm -hmm. You shall do my judgments and keep my ordinances to walk therein. I am the Lord your God. Come on. 
Ye shall therefore keep my statutes and my judgments, which if a man do, he shall live in them. I am the Lord. So it says, when we keep his, his, his statutes and his judgments, it says, if a man do his statutes and his judgments, it says, he shall live in them. So we're supposed to live. How? What brings us life? The laws of God. That's what he's telling you right there. Proverbs 7 verse 2. He says, keep my statutes and my judgments, which if a man do, he shall live in them. The Lord is telling us that there's life in keeping his laws, statutes, and his commandments. You understand? That's what he's saying right there. Watch this. Because the most High God, guess what? When we're in Egypt, we worship those, 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 those idols, the idols of uncleanness and all of that. We was doing all of that. We didn't see nothing wrong with it. Guess what? Now, in captivity, we seem to be doing the same stuff. We have forgotten because the most High God, he taught us how to dress. You understand? He taught us how to eat and what to eat. Guess what? Not only that, he taught us how to, how to deal with personal hygiene. He taught us that. The most High God taught us how to deal with personal hygiene. So today we're going to deal with that. Watch this. Give me Second Chronicles. Okay, chapter 4, verse 1. Second Chronicles, chapter 4. Read verse 1. Second Chronicles, chapter 4, verse 1. Mm -hmm. Moreover, he made an altar of brass, 20 cubits the length thereof, and 20 cubits the breadth thereof, and 10 cubits the height thereof. So the altar of brass, this altar of brass, guess what? If that's the altar of, of brass, now watch the next part here, because here, King Solomon is building the temple, okay? So now there's ordinances that are required for the temple. Watch the next verse. Go ahead. Also, he made a molten sea of 10 cubits from brim to brim Stop around right the campus. He did, he did what now? Also, he made a molten sea of 10 molten, cubits. He made a molten sea. I'm going to show you what this molten sea is and what it was used for. So I want, to, I want you to focus on verse 2 down. Verse 1, he was creating the altar of bread. Verse 2 down, we're going to go into the molten sea that King Solomon made. Okay, read verse 2 again. Second Chronicles chapter 4, verse 2. Mm -hmm. Also, he made a molten sea of 10 cubits from brim to brim, round in compass, and five cubits, the height thereof, and a line of 30 cubits did compass it round about. So now he's giving the measurement, you understand, the dimensions of this molten sea. It was in circular shape, you understand? Go ahead. And under it was the similitude of oxen, mm -hmm. which did compass it round about. Ten in a cubit, compassing the sea round about, two rows of oxen were cast when it was cast. Right. It stood upon twelve oxen, three looking toward the north, and three looking toward the west, and three looking toward the south, and three looking toward the east. Right. And the sea was set above upon them, and all their hinder parts were inward. So now he's telling you, say, listen, this molten sea was sitting upon twelve oxen each facing north, north, south, west, and east. You understand? Three sets. Okay, come on. And the thickness of it was in hand breath, and the brim of it, like the work of the brim of a cup, mm -hmm. with flowers and lilies, and it received and held 3,000 parts. You see that thing? The amount of water that it carried. The amount of water that it carried is as what? Is that and it received and held 3,000 parts. Go ahead. He made also 10 lavers and put five on the right hand and five on the left to wash in them. To do what? To wash in them. So these lavers were there for washing and so, and so forth. Watch this, go ahead. Such things as they offered for the burnt offering, they washed in them. So whenever they, after they did the burnt offering, talk about the priests, the men, after they did the offerings, you understand? Of the, of the temple and all that, this is where they would come to wash themselves, right? But the sea was for the priest to wash in. But the sea was for the priest to wash in. The sea was made, was made specifically for the high priest. Go ahead. That's it on that. That's it on that. Watch this. Let me show you what it looks like. Okay. So the most High God, he taught us how to wash. Today we have forgotten that custom. We think it's normal. If you don't wash your behind. Okay, it's not normal. Now watch this. This right here is what we, were, we just read. You see the oxen? 
three, three, and the, on the other side, it says this right here, it contains 3,000 baht. So out of the mouth of these cows, water came out and it came into this. You see this water right there? That's where, you see that's the pit right there? That's where they would come to wash themselves. You understand? So after they perform, they perform the office of the priesthood when they did the sacrifices and so forth. This is, the, this is what he's talking about, okay? You brothers and sisters, you see this? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Okay, all praises to the most high. All praises. Now, watch this. Give me the book of Numbers, chapter 19, verse 1. The most high God, he taught us how to what? How to sanctify ourselves, how to keep ourselves clean and all that, how to wash ourselves. Unlike when we were in Egypt, we were not doing that. We were just smelly in Egypt, doing all kinds of evil. You understand? Women were smelly. Men, men were smelly as well. You understand? That's why the Lord said, listen, I, I have to teach you again. Okay? Read that. Numbers chapter 19, verse 1. Read that. Numbers chapter 19, verse 1. Mm -hmm. And the Lord spake unto Moses and unto Aaron, saying, Read. This is the ordinance of the law which the Lord has commanded, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, that they bring thee a red heifer without spot, wherein is no blemish, and upon which never came yoke. So now he's talking about, he says, get a red heifer, okay? So this is an animal that is going to be used for sacrifices. This is a female one. Go ahead. And he shall give her unto Eliezer the priest, that he may bring her forth without the camp, and one shall slay her before his face. Meaning the one that has not given birth yet, that's why it says, which never came yoke. Read. And Eliezer the priest shall take off her blood with his finger and sprinkle off her blood directly before the tabernacle of the congregation seven times. Remember, Eliezer is one of the priests. Okay, come on. And one shall bend the heifer in his sight, her skin and her flesh and her blood with her tongue shall he burn. So now they are performing the sacrifice. These are bent offerings right here. These are the, remember, Eliezer is one of the sons of Aaron. Okay, come on. And the priest shall take cedar wood and hyssop and scarlet and cast it into the midst of the burning of the heifer. Meaning the burning of the heifer, meaning the altar of burnt offerings. This is when they were performing burnt offerings. Come on. Then the priest shall wash his clothes and he shall bathe his flesh in water. After he done all these burnt offerings, what will the priest do? Read verse 7 again. Numbers chapter 19, verse 7. Mm -hmm. Then the priest shall wash his clothes, and he shall bathe his flesh in water. And afterwards, he shall come into the camp. Mm -hmm. And the priest shall be unclean until the even. You see that part right there? There is the priest shall wash his clothes, and he shall bathe in his flesh in water. Meaning his body, head to toe, he will bathe himself. Okay? It says, then what, after that, he shall come into the camp. Some of you, you come into the camp, your balls are snake. Mm, that's some nasty stuff. The Bible is letting us know that, because you might be saying, no, but this was only for the priest. I got something for you. Don't worry about that thing. Read verse 7 again. Numbers chapter 19, verse 7. Go ahead. Then the priest shall wash his clothes, and he shall bathe his flesh in water. Mm -hmm. And afterwards, he shall come into the camp, and the priest shall be unclean until the even. Read. And he that burneth her shall wash his clothes in water and bathe in his flesh in water mm -hmm. and shall be unclean until the evening. You see that thing? When the evening comes, he's going to be clean. So the Lord is letting you know, he says what? He says he shall wash his clothes in water, bathe his flesh in water and shall be unclean until the evening. So the most that God, he also, he outlined detailed instructions on how to keep ourselves clean, how to be hygiene, to understand the process of being hygiene and all that. We, the most I go, when we came out of Egypt, is that I have to teach you again because right now you are you don't look like my children. Okay, go ahead, verse nine. And the man that is clean shall gather up the ashes of the heifer and lay them up without the camp in a clean place, mm -hmm. and it shall be kept for the congregation of the children of Israel. For a water of separation, it is a purification for sin. It is a what now? It is a purification for sin. 
Understand, when you don't, when, we, when you are not hygienic, when you be smelly and all that, the most that God, you are in the midst of sin. That goes for both men and women. Brothers be having smelly balls and all that. Sisters be having smelly coochies and all that. You are in the midst of sin. That's why the most that God left this instruction for us, these laws, statutes, and commandments for us to do what? For us to be clean. That's the law. Because when you are not, you are worshiping Beelzebub. You understand? The God of uncleanness, flies and life. You understand? So the most that God is teaching us that how not to worship those other gods. Because when you don't bathe yourself regularly, you worship those other gods, those gods of Egypt. Understand that. Okay? Jump down to verse 11. Numbers chapter 19, verse 11. He that touches the dead body of any man shall be unclean seven days. So now he's giving you different scenarios of when, when you find yourself unclean. The first time when we read it, we're going into what? When you're dealing with the, the sacrifices, the burnt offerings, because they had to deal with blood, the guts of the animal, they had to burn it and all that. After they are done, that the Lord said, okay, you need to wash yourself in water. Make yourself clean, wash your clothes and all that, so you can be clean. Now, he's giving another scenario. That if you touch a dead body, here's what you must do. Read. He shall purify himself with it on the third day. Mm -hmm. And on the seventh day, he shall be clean. Read. But if he purify not himself the third day, then the seventh day, he shall not be clean. So on the third day, you must purify yourself so that on the, third, on the seventh day, you must be unclean. So from the, from he says, he shall purify himself with it on the third day. That goes into the water. And on the seventh day, he shall be clean. But if he purify not himself on the third day, then the seventh day, he shall not be clean. He's not saying on the first day, you're not washing yourself. Okay, go ahead. Whosoever touches the dead body of any man that is dead, Mm -hmm. and purifies not himself, he Rain. defileth the tabernacle of the Lord. Rain. And that soul shall be cut off from Israel. Mm. Because the water of separation was not sprinkled upon him, he shall be unclean. His uncleanness is yet upon him. You see that thing? Because there was water of separation that needed to be sprinkled upon him, so you can be clean. Read. This is the law. When a man dieth in a tent, all that come into the tent and all that is in the tent shall be unclean seven days. That's why you notice when we go to funerals, right? When we come from the cemetery, before you enter into that person's house where there's a funeral, at the gate, there's somebody that is, has got a, like a bucket of water or something and people be washing themselves. This is all coming from the scriptures, okay? We get it from the scriptures. We still have some of those customs, but the, the majority of the customs we have forgotten them. Okay. Jump down to verse 16. Numbers chapter 19, verse 16. Read. And whosoever toucheth one that is slain with a sword in the open fields, or a dead body, or a bone of a man, or a grave, shall be unclean seven days. You see that thing? He says, you touch, you touch the body of one that was killed with a sword in an open field, or a dead body, or the bone of a man. Or the grave, he says, you shall be unclean seven days, right? And for an unclean person, they shall take off the ashes of the burnt heifer of purification for sin, and mm -hmm. running water shall be put thereto in a vessel. You see that thing? So now, this is how we, this is what we did. Washing ourselves and all that, the most High God is teaching us personal hygiene. Okay, go ahead. And a clean person shall take hyssop and dip it in the water and sprinkle it upon the tent and upon all the vessels and upon the persons that were there and mm -hmm. upon him that touches that touched the bone or one slain or one dead or a grave that's why when we come to that's why a lot of the times when we come from funerals that's why they will find somebody that is responsible for the people to wash their hands before they enter in coming from the cemetery they get it from here we don't and the clean person shall sprinkle upon the unclean on the third day and on the seventh day. And on the seventh day, he shall purify himself and wash his clothes and bathe himself in water and shall be clean at even. Read. But the man that shall be unclean and shall not purify himself, that soul shall be cut off from among the congregation. Mm. 
because he has defiled the sanctuary of the Lord. The water of separation has not been sprinkled upon him. He is unclean. So now the most that God is telling us, listen, you must wash yourself. That's the point I'm trying to show you. The Lord is teaching us how, how to keep ourselves clean, how to maintain a good hygiene heavy. Okay, go ahead. And it shall be a perpetual statute unto them that he that sprinkled the water of separation shall wash his clothes. And he that touched the water of separation shall be unclean until even. You see that thing? So now this is basically also, by the way, this was part of the, the old covenant of animal sacrifice. But what I'm showing you is the most High God always taught us how to, wa how to wash ourselves, how to maintain a good personal hygiene. You understand? Watch this. Give me Leviticus 15 verse 1. Leviticus chapter 15 verse 1. Remember, this was this went into the priest. And also not only that, but this went into um, brothers and sisters that encountered these issues. You touch a dead body and so forth. You, you touch somebody that was killed with a sword in the open field, or you find a dead body or bone of a man and so forth. The instruction was that the priest will make sure that you are clean. So that what? So that the uncleanness of that dead body that you've touched, you came in contact with, is washed away from you. You understand? Leviticus now, 15 verse 1. Leviticus chapter 15 verse 1. And the Lord spake unto Moses and, and to Aaron, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, and say unto them, When any man has a running issue out of his flesh, because of his issue he is unclean. So now this, this, this right here is talking about, let's say you're having diarrhea. You're having a runny stomach. The Lord is saying you are unclean when you're having a runny stomach. Go ahead. And this shall be his uncleanness in his issue. Mm -hmm. Whether his flesh run with his issue or his flesh be stopped from his issue, it is his uncleanness. It is his uncleanness, meaning what? You're having diarrhea, whatever the case may be, however it might have been, it might have happened to you. You understand? The most that God says, you are unclean. Okay, come on. He's going to tell you what you must do. Read. Every bed whereon he lieth that had the issue is unclean. And everything whereon he sitteth shall be unclean. So he says what? Your clothes also and all of that, they are going to be unclean if you don't keep a good hygiene. That's what the Lord is. Basically, what the Lord is saying is that he's saying you must what? Maintain a good hygiene. That's what he's saying. Okay, go ahead. And whosoever touches his bed shall wash his clothes and bathe himself in water and be unclean until the even. Wait. And he that sitteth on anything whereon he said that hath the issue shall wash his clothes and bathe himself in water and be unclean until the even. So now he's talking about like whatever it is that you touch, that thing will be unclean. But this also obviously is not talking about the fact that because that means everything is going to be unclean, whatever it is that you this was basically pertaining if you have to go to the temple. The temple is no longer standing right now. You understand? We are the temple. So the Lord is saying, keep your temple clean. Meaning what? Maintain a good hygiene practice. You understand? A good habit when it comes to your hygiene. Read. Right? And he that touches the flesh of him that has the issue shall wash his clothes and bathe himself in water and be unclean until the even. So now, because this was part of the law of animal sacrifice, but what, what? pertaining to you going to the temple. But the temple is no longer standing. So does it mean that when you're having diarrhea and all that, you're not supposed to wash your behind? No, you must wash your behind, both men and women. Okay? So the most that God is giving you instances of the scenarios of when you are unclean and what you need to do in order for you to do what? To be clean. Now jump down. Jump down, to verse, jump down to verse 16 now. Watch this. Leviticus chapter 15, verse 16. Mm -hmm. And if any man's seed of copulation go out from him, then he shall wash all his flesh in water and be unclean until the even. So now this goes into sex, sexual intercourse. He says, you're having sex with your wife and all that, or with your husband. It says... If any man's seed of copulation go out from him, he shall wash all his flesh in water and be unclean until the evening. Go ahead. And every garment and every skin whereon is the seed of copulation shall be washed with water and be unclean until the evening. Read verse 17 again. Verse 16 goes into 
You have sex with your wife, you must bait your behind after that, both men and women. But read verse 17 again. Watch this. Leviticus chapter 15, verse 17. Come on. And every garment and every skin whereon is the seed of copulation shall be washed with water and be unclean until the evening. This goes into both men and women, sisters that have dildos and cucumbers and all that, which you must stop doing that. You must stop uh, pleasuring yourself because it's against the law. That's fornication. The most High God says you do that, all the stuff that's coming out, guess what? You must wash your behind, okay? Both the men also. Brothers that are choking the chicken, masturbating, watching porn, nasty stuff. The most High God says you must wash yourself with water and be unclean. And you, you shall be unclean until the evening. When the evening comes, you're going to be unclean again. Go ahead. The woman also with whom men shall lie with seed of copulation. Now this goes for the woman. Is that the woman also with whom men shall lie with seed of copulation. Okay, this goes for the woman. That you have sex with your husband and so forth. Wait. Leviticus chapter 15 verse 18. Wait. The woman also with whom men shall lie with seed of copulation. They shall both bathe themselves in water and be unclean until the even. So the both of you, the most high God says you must wash yourselves. You understand? You have, after you have sexual intercourse, the most high God says you must bath yourself. You must bathe. These are things that we have not learned as a nation. The most high God says this part of your repentance, guess what? This is the thing that we must start to practice. These laws. We must apply these laws to our lives because when we don't, we're worshiping the Alzheimer's. The Lord of uncleanness, Lord of the fly, Lord of death, Lord of stink. The most that goes that we mustn't do this. We are his children. We must keep our temple clean. Okay. Jump down to verse 19 now. This the fifth, uh, 16 to 18 goes into sexual intercourse for both men and women. 19 goes into sisters on their menstrual cycles. Read verse 19. Leviticus chapter 15, verse 19. Come on. And if a woman have an issue, and her issue in her flesh be blood. That's the menstrual cycle, right? She shall be put apart seven days. So for seven days, you are going to be unclean as a sister, right? And whosoever touches her shall be unclean until the evening. The touching is going to tell you what it means by this, you know? And everything that she lieth upon in her separation shall be unclean. Everything also that she sitteth upon shall be unclean. Read. And whosoever touches a bed shall wash his clothes and bathe himself in water and be unclean until the evening. So now here's the thing. You sisters that are, when you get, when you are on your menstrual cycle, many sisters, they don't know how to be hygiene. They wash once a day, which is nasty. You must wash three times a day at least. You understand? Because you know, you're on your menstrual cycle. There's many things, there's dead coming out and all that. You must maintain a good hygiene. Three times a day, you must do the stuff like that. You understand? Make sure that your coochie is clean and all that. Yet the most that God is telling you what you must do. Wash, you, wash yourself, bathe yourself in water and all that. Okay, come on. And whosoever touches anything that she set upon shall wash his clothes and bathe himself in water and be unclean until the evening. So you must make sure that you maintain a good hygiene, especially when you're on your menstrual cycle. On a normal circumstance, twice a day. Menstrual cycle, three times a day. Read verse 24. Leviticus chapter 15, verse 24. Mm -hmm. And if any man lie with her at all, and her flowers be upon him. If any man lie with her at all. You see that part right there when it says at all? At all. That part right there. At all. He says, if any man lie with this woman that is on a menstrual cycle at all, that goes into what? That goes into um, whether if, if your sister is on a menstrual cycle, because remember, you are unclean for seven days. So if the blood stops on the third or second day or the fifth day, you are still unclean. Your seven days are not old. The most that God says, if any man lie with her at all, that goes into oral sex. You understand? Um, using your hands and all that, that's still sexual intercourse. That's why he says at all. Okay, go ahead. And if any man lie with her at all, and her flowers be upon him, meaning the menstrual cycles be upon you, 
So the Lord is saying, on your menstrual, you men, you must not be dealing with your wife like that. Go ahead. He shall be unclean seven days. Mm -hmm. And all the bed whereon he lies shall be unclean. So now you as the man, you deal with the sister on your menstrual, you also are going to be unclean for seven days. You understand? So now, but here's another thing. Um, when you sisters, you're on your menstrual, okay, you cannot be dealing with a man at all, period. Because guess what? Your vagina must get a break. That's why the most that God is not only that, not only is it the time where you, for seven days that you, is the time when you are unclean, you must learn your lesson for disobeying your husband and so forth, hence the menstrual cramps. But it's not just for that, but it's also to give your vagina a break for seven days. You understand? So that it does not, nobody deals with it. Okay, read. And if a woman have an issue of her blood many days out of the time of a separation. Meaning what? You've got your menstrual cycle that lasts for more than seven days. The, what, the, what does the most High God say? Read. Or if it ran beyond the time of a separation, all the days of the issue of her uncleanness shall be as the days of a separation. She shall be unclean. Meaning what? If you go beyond seven days, that means the next seven days, you have to go another seven days for you to be purified and be clean. You understand? So that's what the Lord is saying. So the most that God is teaching you that you must bathe, you must bath, keep a good personal hygiene. This is for both men and women. Read verse 31, because all of this goes into when you're about to go into the temple. You couldn't go like that into the temple when you are nasty and unclean. But watch this. Read verse 31, because this is the whole point of this chapter. Read. Leviticus chapter 15, verse 31. Mm -hmm. Thus shall you separate the children of Israel from their uncleanness. You see, we start what? Thus shall you separate the children of Israel from their uncleanness. You shall separate the children of Israel from their uncleanness. The Lord is telling you that we must be separated from our uncleanness. Okay, go ahead. That they die not in their uncleanness. The Lord says, don't die in your uncleanness. Wait. When they defile my tabernacle, that is among them. That when, that's when the tabernacle was standing. That's when the temple was standing. But today the temple is not standing. We are the temple. You understand? Give me that in 1 Corinthians 3, 15 real quick. The temple is no longer, the temple of Jerusalem was destroyed in 70 AD. So therefore, the temple is no longer standing. Guess who's the temple now? we the temple. Watch this. 1 Corinthians 3, 15. Read that. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 16. Mm -hmm. Know ye not that ye are the temple of God and that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you? We are the temple of God. The Spirit of God dwelleth in us. The laws of God dwell in us. That's what the Spirit is. Hold that. Get that in John 6, 53 real quick. So we know what is the Spirit that dwelleth in us. When you repent, when you don't repent, keep God's commandment, you're still wearing pants as a sister. The Spirit of the Lord is not in you yet. Okay, read that. John 6, verse 63. Come on. John chapter 6, verse 63. Read. It is the spirit that quickeneth. Mm -hmm. The flesh profited nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. So the words that Christ spoke unto us, they are spirit and they are life. So the spirit is the word of God, which is God's laws. So go back to 1 Corinthians 3, verse 16 again. First Corinthians chapter 3, verse 16. Mm -hmm. Know ye not that ye are the temple of God and that the spirit of God dwelleth in you? The laws of God dwell in you. Come on. If any man defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy. So now, because our body is the temple now, you defile your temple, the Lord says, I'm going to destroy you. So meaning what? As an example, you don't wash your behind, you smell it. You've got smelly balls, you know, you understand your cookie smell. The most high God says, I'm going to destroy you because you are not keeping the temple clean. Your temple is not sanctified. Your body is unclean. Okay, go ahead. For the temple of God is holy. The temple of God is holy. It must be holy and sanctified with the laws of God, right? Which temple you are. Which temple you are. So we are the temple now because the temple is no longer standing. Give me that in 1 Corinthians 6, verse 9. 6, verse 19. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, read verse 19. Because our bodies don't belong to us. Our bodies belong to 
Jesus the Christ, the one who, who died for us. Okay, read that. 1 Corinthians 6, verse 19. Read. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 19. Mm -hmm. What? Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, mm -hmm. which ye have of God, and ye are not your own? You see that thing? And you are not your own. It is your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost is the laws of God. The Holy Ghost is God's commandment. Okay? It says, which is in you, which ye have the have of God, and you are not your own. Your body don't belong to you. Go ahead. For ye are bought with a price. Mm -hmm. Therefore, glorify God in your body in and your in your spirit. Therefore, glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. You see what the Bible is saying? It says, ye are bought with a price. The price that we were bought with is what? The blood of Christ. That's the price. It says, therefore, glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God. So your spirit and your mind, your, your, your body and your spirit must work together. Your spirit, which is your mind, must what? You must keep God's commandments and God's laws will teach you to what? To maintain purification in your body. You must keep that law of what? Of being hygiene. That's the law. That's the commandment, by the way. You understand? And one thing I've seen is that our brother, many of brothers, they don't know how to be hygiene. And the sisters also, they don't know how to be hygiene. That's why, you see, sisters walk into the taxi, you smell like a star. You smell tuna. That's an example of sisters don't know how to be clean. They don't know how to wash themselves. Many of them don't wash themselves. They don't change their underwear. You understand? So just some nastiness going on in our community. So young girls also, they don't know how to do it because the older ones don't know how to do it. It's the same thing. Young men also, they don't know how to do it because older men don't know how to do it. So both men and women, the most High God says, you better make sure that you maintain personal hygiene, okay? Because that's the laws of God. Understand that? Especially the sisters. Oh my God. Now, watch this. Give me... You know what? No, 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 no. Give me 2 Corinthians 5. Give me 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Okay? 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Read verse 14. Because our bodies don't belong to us. They belong to the Father. Watch this. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 14. Read. For the love of Christ constraineth us. Mm -hmm. Because we thus judge. We use the laws of God to judge men. So there's no such thing or don't judge me. That's not in the Bible. The Bible is a book of judgment. That's why in the Bible you've got the, got the book of judges. That's why in the Bible you've got the book called the book of judges. Because judges were judging Israel with the laws of God. That's the same thing we're doing today. Okay, read that again, verse 14. Second Corinthians chapter 5, verse 14. Read. For the love of Christ constraineth us. Mm -hmm. Because we thus judge. Come on. That if one died for all, then we're all dead. He says, one died for all. The all men that Christ died for is the 12 tribes of Israel. Read. And that he died for all, that they which live should not henceforth live unto themselves, mm -hmm. but unto him which died for them and rose again. You see that thing? Now, now that because Christ died, so we can get the chance to get the kingdom, is that we should no longer live unto ourselves, but unto him which died for us, and rose again the third day. So guess what? Now that Christ died for us, we can no longer do the evil that we used to do. We don't have a right to do that. You understand? There's no such thing of, no, this is my body, and sisters, I'm comfortable in pants and all that. Mm -mm. That's not your body, sister. Brothers, they don't want to grow their beard. He says, no, but I like it when I don't have a beard. That's not your body, brother. That belongs to the Lord. And you were bought with a price. Christ died. You understand? He died for us. So guess what? We must present our bodies a living sacrifice. How do we do that? We no longer live unto ourselves, but we live unto him. Ha! We keep the commandments of the Lord. Whatever the Bible says, we do it. Okay, go ahead. Wherefore, henceforth know we no man after the flesh. So now it says, because of that, because of verse 15, it says now we must know the man that you used to know after the flesh, meaning what? You used to fulfill the lust of your flesh. He says, no more. You must not do that. No more. Okay, come on. Yea, though we have known Christ after the flesh, 
Mm -hmm. Yet now henceforth know we him no more. We no longer know him after the flesh. We know him in spirit now. Meaning we keep the commandments. We keep his law, his statutes and his commandments as it is written. You understand? Give me that in Romans 12. You understand? The, best, the, the only way we keep our, our temple purified and all that, to think to keep your, your temple to be purified and clean, this is how we do it. Romans 12. Romans chapter 12, read verse 1. Okay, come on. Romans chapter 12, verse 1. Mm -hmm. I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice. That you must do what? That ye present your bodies a living sacrifice. You must present your body a living sacrifice. So because remember, Christ died and rose again. Now our job is to present our body a living sacrifice. So that sacrifice, that our that sacrifice is us now. We are that sacrifice. We are that living sacrifice that we must present it to the Lord. How, how must we present our bodies to the Lord? Read. Holy. That they acceptable. It, hold on. It must be holy. We must present our bodies holy to the Lord. Here you are. You don't eat right. You are overweight. You are in, you are not in shape. You understand? You are unclean. You, are, you smell between your legs. You understand? You don't wash. You don't have a personal hygiene. That body is not being presented holy to the Lord. You're not presenting your body as a living sacrifice to the Most High. You understand? Go ahead. Acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Do you see that thing? So the only time when the Most High God will accept our body as a living sacrifice Guess what? It must be holy. We must say, what are we sacrificing now? You get rid of the, 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 bad, the bad hygiene practices that you do. Because given tonight's topic, the fear of water. Our people, they fear water. They are afraid of water. You are afraid to go into the bath and wash your behind. Our people are afraid of the water. It's like there's sharks in there. There's crocodiles in there. You'll find a hippo in there. No. Go into the water and wash your behind. Read again, verse 1. Romans chapter 12, verse 1. Mm -hmm. I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, mm -hmm. holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. He says it must be holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. That's what the Lord is saying right there. Now watch this. Now, I'm going to show you something, right? Because remember what the Lord, the Lord, the most like God, he played the Egyptians with what? With lice, with flies. You understand? All of which represents uncleanness. Okay? But because now the most like God says, don't follow after the customs of the Egyptians. We saw when we're in the wilderness, the Lord taught us how we must maintain personal hygiene. You understand? When Solomon built the temple, how we must maintain personal hygiene to wash ourselves and all that. Bathing. Bathing is a law of God. But now because as a nation we are in captivity, we're no longer keeping God's commandments, here's what the Lord says he will do. Give me the 20, 20, verse 15 real quick. Watch this. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 15. Come on. But it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe to do all his commandments, and his statutes, which I commanded this day, that Read. all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. Are all these curses, if, if we don't obey, here all these curses will come upon us and they will overtake us. So the, some of the curses that came upon us and overtake us, watch this. Read verse 27. Wait, wait. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's what I want. Read verse 27. Come on. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 27. Read. The Lord will smite thee with the porch of Egypt. The Most High God says, I'm going to smite you with the porch of Egypt. Meaning the diseases and plagues of Egypt, they are going to come upon you if you break these laws. You understand? Uncleanness. Go ahead. And with the emeralds. With the emeralds. These are hemorrhoids. You can have genital hemorrhoids or anal hemorrhoids where you've got um, inflammation on your bum or inflammation on your rods. For both men and women. Go ahead. And with the scab. 
and with the skin that goes into what head light okay body light and pubic light okay that's the skin right and with the itch and with the itch you're gonna itch because of head light body light and pubic light you're gonna be itching scratching yourself all over the place go ahead whereof thou canst not be healed whereof thou canst not be healed you see that part right there this will affect both men and women. This is God's judgment right here upon the children of disobedience. Okay, now watch this. Give me, um, watch this. Let me show you something, right? Let me, sh let me share my screen because we're going to be dealing with this. We're going to deal with head lights, uh, body lights, and pubic lights. But the one I want to hone in on is the pubic one. Okay, because that's, the, that's one of the big ones. Okay, that's one of the ones that are really affecting Israel. Okay, now we're gonna read this. We're gonna be dealing with um, head lights, body lights, and pubic lights. But you know, I'm gonna deal with the pubic lights. Okay, watch this. Hmm. Hold on a second. Let's see. You know what? I think I'll start with this one. Let's just click that. Headlights. Okay, now read that. Healthline.com. Headlight infestation. Read that. Reading from healthline.com. Mm -hmm. Headlights infestation. Come on. What are headlights? Mm -hmm. Headlights are small, wingless, blood sucking insects. You see what headlights are? Headlights is as headlights are small, wingless blood sucking in insects. This is a headlight right here. This is a headlight. It does not have wings. It's a wingless blood sucking insect. Okay. Go ahead. They live in the hair on your head mm -hmm. and feed off the blood from your scalp. You see that thing? It says they live in the hair on your head and feed off the blood from your scalp. This is God's judgment, by the way. Okay, come on. A life, a single adult, a single adult is about the size of a sesame seed. You see, they are too small. A sesame seed is very small. That's the size of a headlight. Wait. A neat, a louse egg is about the size of a small flake of dendrus. You see, you cannot even distinguish that. You cannot distinguish a headlight from dendrus. That's how small they are. And that's how similar they will look. Okay, read that. What causes head lice? Mm -hmm. Head lice are contagious. You can become infected with head lice when the insects crawl on onto your head. Ways you might get head lice include. Come on. Touching your head to the head of someone with lice, with head so lice. Someone, someone that has head lice, if you touch your head, You've got headlights, you touch their head, guess what? They also gonna get headlights. That thing is that thing is demonic. Go ahead. Sharing the personal items, for example, the comb mm -hmm. of someone with headlights. Of someone with headlights. So you're sharing a comb with someone with headlights, you're gonna get headlights. Go ahead. Using a fabric item after your person with headlights. You see that thing, a fabric item with the most like God says. You're gonna what you also gonna get headlines. So it, it is contagious like that. Okay, so read on. While transmission of lies via inanimate objects may be possible, it's been found to be highly unlikely. Come on. Some of these inanimate objects may include brushes, combs, berets, headbands, headphones, and hats. Mm, go ahead. It may also be possible for lies to live for a time on upholstered furniture, bedding, towels, or clothing. You see that? So headlights are everywhere. The most that God says, not necessarily everywhere, but somebody that has headlights, wherever they were, wherever they are, there's going to be headlights wherever they are. That's what the Lord is saying. You can confuse this for dendrum. You might find out, you might be surprised that you actually have headlights. That's the scab. The Lord will smite with the scab, the crown of the head of the daughters of Zion. Mm -hmm. That's headlights right there. 
You understand? So the most that God says, this stuff right here will affect both men and women. Okay? Give me that in Isaiah 316 real quick. You know what? Read Deuteronomy 28 verse 27 again. Because it, affo- it, uh, it will affect both men and women. Yes, Deuteronomy 28 verse 27 is making reference to both men and women. Okay? Read that. Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 27. Come on. The Lord will smite thee with the porch of Egypt mm-hmm. and with the emeralds and with the scab and with the itch whereof thou canst not be healed. So you're going to have scab and itch. So the scab goes into the headlines because it will affect your head as well and your itch. He says, whereof thou cannot be healed. Give me Isaiah 3.16. Come on. Isaiah chapter 3 verse 16. Read. Moreover, the, the Lord says, because the daughters of Zion are haughty and walk with stretch forth necks and wanton eyes, walking and mincing as they go and making a tinkling with their feet. Read. Therefore, the Lord will smite with a scab the crown of the head of the daughters of Zion and the Lord will discover their secret parts. You see that thing? So the most that God is saying, He's gonna smite the, 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 the with the scab the crown of the head of the daughters of Zion, meaning this our sisters. Our sisters, many of our sisters, as long as they are wearing pants and all, they've got head lice. Not only that, not they not, not only will they have lice in their head, the most that God says, and the Lord will discover their secret parts. They are going to have pubic lice too. Not only will they think, not only will they have their discharges and all that. Not only they also will have pubic lice, where their coochie will be itching and all that, that hair on their coochie will be itching. Uh-huh. That's what the most that God says, and the Lord will discover their secret parts with, with what pubic lice. This is heavy stuff right here. You understand? That's some, that's some heavy stuff. You don't want to keep God's commandments. You're still preaching like a robot when you're supposed to submit. You're going to have pubic lice. Okay, you brothers that get married to the sisters, you'll discover it on that day. Mm. That's a gift that just keeps on giving. Okay, now watch this. I'm coming back to this. I'm coming back here. I'm coming back here. Give me to Tommy 28, verse 22. Okay, you told me 28, read verse 22 for me. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 22. Come on, the Lord shall smite thee with the consumption. Mm-hmm. and with a fever and with an inflammation and with an extreme burning and with a sword right. and with blasting and with malchum and they shall pursue thee until thou perish. So now this goes into what the most that God he says I'm going to consume you with disease. He says, he says consumption, fever, inflammation, extreme burning that goes into itching as well. You understand with the sword and with blasting that goes into itching. And with mildew, that's fungus, that's rottenness in your head, your body, and in between your legs. That's what the Lord says they will do. He says, they shall pursue thee until thou perish. Meaning many of our brothers and sisters, they're going to die with this disease. Right? You understand? That's what the most that God is saying. Give me that in Leviticus 13, verse 31. Leviticus 13, verse 31. Watch this. Leviticus chapter 13, verse 31. Come on. And if the priest look on the plague of the skull, the plague of the skull, the plague of the skull that goes into your head. Okay, go ahead. And behold, it be not in sight deeper than the skin. Mm -hmm. And that there is no black hair in it. That there is no black hair in it. So that means there's white hair, but it's not deeper than the skin. Verse 30 says, is it be deeper than the skin, meaning by the roots. But this one right here is not by the roots. You understand? It's on the hair itself. That is not in, in skin deep. Go ahead. That means you've got what? You've got a plague on your hair. Read. And that there is no plague hair in it, then the priest sh- shall shut up him that has the plague of the skull seven days. Now you're going to be what? You're going to be, you're going to be plagued. The priest will say, okay, for the next seven days, you must be separate so you can be what? Lord's will, the adventure, you'll be healed. So that's why a lot of the times you see that um, 
brothers and sisters, you've got your hair, you've got, you, you think, you know, you've got the, the, the white hair, the gray hair you have, you think is wisdom. No, no, no. That can be a plague. Think about it. You may be sitting there thinking, yeah, no, that means wisdom. Mm -mm. Verse 31 could be the, the cause of it. The most I might you with a scare. Because, I mean, the, imagine, you are a young man, you are 21, 22, you are 24 years old, you already have white hair. Mm -mm. That's not wisdom. That's what we read really here. Read verse 31 again. Leviticus chapter 13, verse 31. Go ahead. And if the priest look on the plague of the skull, and behold, it be not inside deeper than the skin, and that there is no black hair in it, mm -hmm. then the priest shall shut up him that has the plague of the skull seven days. You see that thing? That's a plague. The Lord is plaguing it. That's what the Lord is saying right there. Read Leviticus 21, verse 20. Leviticus 21, read verse 20 now. Okay. Leviticus chapter 21, verse 20. Read. Or crook backed, or a dwarf, or that has a blemish in his eye, mm -hmm. or be scurvy, or scabbed. You see that thing? His... It says, or be scurvy, or scabbed. The scurvy goes into the itching. The itch that we read in 2028, or scabbed, that goes into the scab, read. Or has his stones broken? Or has his stones broken? What is, the, what is that going into? That goes into what that pubic light. Because now they are just eating the blood between your legs. That's what the Lord is saying right there. Okay, now watch this. Now, let's go back. Um, okay, that's the headline. Let's go back. I want to deal with the body one. The body line. This goes into personal hygiene or personal un uncleanness. Okay? Body lies infestation. That's the body lies right there. Okay? This one. You see, the body lies is the big one. It goes under your armpits and all of that. And if you overweight, it goes under your stomach and all that. Mm. The body lies, especially when you are uh, on top on top, you're going to have pubic lies too. Body lies, pubic lies. Body lies and pubic lies. If you on top on top, you're going to have these two. Body lies and pubic lies. Okay. Peach black, peach black Afro was not complimenting no men or no women. No sisters won't say on top on top. Mm -mm. That's against the laws of God. Understand that. Now read what you got. Body lies what? Body lies infestation. Mm -hmm. Reading from headline.com. Go ahead. What is body lice infestation? Wait. An infestation of body lice occurs when a certain type of lice invade the body and clothing. It, it invades your body and your clothes. Okay, come on. Lice are parasitic insects that feed on human blood and can infest the head, body, and pubic area. So now it, it now is affecting your body as well. So that means under your armpits and all that. Okay. If you've got men boobs, you're going to find them there as well. Okay. Read that. Infestation. Infestations are generally spread by close contact with other people and are typically found in areas of poor hygiene and crowding. Read that again. Read that again. Okay, come on. Infestations are generally spread by close contact with other people and are typically found in areas of poor hygiene and crowding. He says their body lies is found in areas of poor hygiene and crowding. Body lies are found in areas of poor hygiene and crowding. You understand? So that's why, hence why we're going over this topic right now. Personal hygiene. Go ahead. Other animals or pets, like dogs and cats, don't play a role in spreading human lies. Mm -hmm. Humans are the body lies only host and lice will die within five to seven days if they fall off a person. If they fall off. If they don't fall off, they're going to sit on you. You understand? Let's read that. What causes body lice infestation? What causes body lice infestation? Mm -hmm. The body lice is larger than other types of lice. They lay their eggs and leave waste on skin and in clothing. Mm -hmm. Yo! Yo, just by reading this, I mean, come on, my skin is even itchy. 
Kucuri. Kucuri. Read that thing again. Woo. The body louse is larger than other types of lice. They lay their eggs and leave waste on skin and in clothing. They, they poop on your skin. They poop on your body. That's why there's body odor. You've got body odor is because you are covered with, with, with the body, body life poop. You are, you are covered with body life poop. If you've got body odor, body life poop. Read that part again. The body louse is larger than other types of lice. Mm -hmm. They lay their eggs and leave waste on skin and in clothing. Mm. Lice can crawl, but they can't fly, hop, or jump. They crawl. They crawl on your skin. That hence the itchiness. Read on. Infestations occur worldwide and are spread via close person-to-person -person contact or through commonly shared bed linens, towels, mm. and clothing. Come on. In general, infestations of body lice are limited to people who live in unhygienic or mm. crowded living conditions Wait. and who don't have access to clean clothing. Who don't have access to clean clothing. It says what? It says body lice are limited to people who live in unhygienic or crowded living conditions who don't have access to clean clothing. Hmm. Now, read that. Recognizing the signs of body lice, body lice infestation. Recognizing the signs of body lice infestation. Mm -hmm. Common symptoms of a body lice infestation include the following. Intense itching. Pruritus. Intense Pruritus. That's the itch that we just read about. You understand? In the book of Leviticus. Come on. Rash caused by an allergic reaction to body lice bites. Because they bite. They bite, they poop, they feed on you. Red? Red bumps on the skin. Red bumps on the skin, come on. Thickened or darkened skin. The thickened and darkened skin is because what? It's because it's the thickness of the dirt, of the garbage on your skin, right? Usually near the waist or groin. You see that part right there? Is that it's usually near the waist or groin. You understand? That's where your private areas are. Go ahead. If the lice have been there for a long time. If lice have been there for a long time. That means there's no regular bathing. There's no regular exercise. Because exercises, you get to release toxins from your body and all that. Then you bath and all that. You know, if you do it regularly, all this stuff is going to go away. That's why we want brothers to exercise, sisters to exercise, especially the sisters, because they are the ones that get up. When they get affected by this stuff, oh my God. Mm. Oh, just vomit here. Okay, now, let's go back. Let's deal with the one that I really want to deal with. This one right here. Read that. Pubic life infestation. Remember, don't forget, the most High God says, I'm going to plague you with this. I'm going to plague you with the plague of Egypt. What you see right here, this is affecting us in the lens of our captivity. Okay, come on, read that. Pubic lice infestation. Pubic lice infestation. Read that. What are pubic lice? Mm -hmm. Pubic lice, also known as crabs. Also known as what? Also known as crabs. It says pubic lice is are also known as crabs. Let's see what a pubic lice look like. Let's go back. This right here is a pubic lice. This is a pubic. You see, it's small. Mm. Now, watch this. Let's go back. I'm going to share my screen real quick because I have a video that I want to share. Pubic lice are a parasitic type of sexually transmitted infection. Or so that's a, that's a 3D version of the pubic lice. You see what it looks like? It's sitting on yes, between sir. this one sits between your balls. You understand? It sits on the coochie. This one. Or ST. Pubic lice are a parasitic type of sexually transmitted infection, or STI. The parasite's scientific names are Pediculus pubis or Phtheris pubis. However, the insects are commonly referred to as crabs. Mm. The small six-legged lice are typically found in the genital area of humans within the pubic hairs. Mm. 
Some pubic lice will migrate to armpit hair and eyebrows, but this is not as common. The parasite starts as a nit, which is a small egg that is attached to a hair follicle. The nit will hatch out of the egg within six to ten days as a nymph or immature louse. The nymph grows into an adult louse within two to three weeks. An adult louse can grow to be between one and a half to two millimeters long and live for three to four weeks. Mm. The females will be slightly larger than the males. You see, the female one is big. You see, is the female one is obese. Is is humongous. On top, on top for the female one. Look at it. <laughs> when laying eggs, she will lay an estimated thirty eggs within her lifespan. Pubic lice feed exclusively on human blood. Mm. Pubic lice are most commonly acquired during sexual activity. You see that? Is that the pubic lice are most commonly acquired during sexual intercourse. So that's why you brothers and sisters, before you prove, before you can even think of getting a wife or a husband, make sure that you get your medical record, make sure that everything is good. You don't have none of these things, okay? Increased risk factors of the parasite spreading to you are having sexual contact with an infected person, having multiple sexual partners, sharing a bed, bedding, towels, or clothes with an infected person. The parasites rarely spread through objects such as toilet seats because they require a warm human body to live mm. and their feet are not designed to walk across smooth surfaces. Common symptoms include itching in the genital area, skin irritation in the infected area, and sores or lesions due to bites and scratching. In some cases, people discover they have pubic lice on their own. A visual examination of a potentially infected area, preferably with a magnifying glass, may show small oval eggs attached to the hair, or you might see a louse. However, the lice and eggs are small and could be difficult to locate. If you think you might be infected, you should seek a proper diagnosis from a healthcare professional. Anyone that is diagnosed or infested with pubic lice should be tested for the presences of other sexually transmitted diseases mm. and notify any sex partner over the last month that they might have been exposed to an infestation. Yeah. There are effective over-the-counter treatment remedies for pubic lice that this can be found at your local pharmacy or drugstore. Are you brothers seeing this? <laughs> 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 yes, sir. Mm, this is crazy. This is crazy. Mm. You understand? You could be having this thing just walking around. Mm. Mm? You should follow the instructions provided by the product manufacturer. If the infestation is more severe, there are prescription options that you should discuss with your health care provider. Any treatment should be followed by utilizing a fine tooth comb to remove any dead lice and eggs and machine washing clothes and bedding in hot water. Avoid sexual contact while being treated for the parasites. To prevent being infected again, make sure you and your partner have successfully completed the treatment regimen and are no longer infected. Pubic lice do not transmit diseases. However, secondary bacterial infections may occur from scratching the skin. So that means that it says they are not transmitted, but when, the, when you scratch, you can also cause a bacterial infection. You brothers are hearing this, you sisters as well? Yes, sir. Okay, yes, sir. sisters, are you hearing this? Yes, sir. Okay. If you have any concerns about being exposed to pubic lice, seek the advice of a medical professional. Mm -hmm. All praise it to the Lord. All praise to the Most High. Now, watch this. Give me, give me the book. Give me the book of First Samuel. Okay, give me First Samuel chapter five verse eight. First Samuel, we gonna deal with the pubic lice now. First Samuel five verse eight. Okay. First Samuel chapter five verse eight. First Samuel you know chapter five verse eight. Before you give me first time, you go back to Deuteronomy 28. I want to touch on something. Deuteronomy chapter 28. Okay. Read Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse. Read verse 27 again. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 27. Read. The Lord will smite thee with the porch of Egypt mm -hmm. and with the emeralds. And, and with the emeralds. Guess what? The emerald goes into what? 
the emerald goes into inflammation. Remember, the Lord says, read verse 22. I'm going to show you something. You told me to read verse 22, then we're going to jump to verse 27 again. Read. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 22. Come on. The Lord shall smite thee with a consumption mm -hmm. and with a fever and with an inflammation and with an extreme burning and with a sword and with plastic and with mildew and they shall pursue thee until thou perish. Now I wanted to show something here. It says consumption and a fever and with an inflammation that goes into emerald, which is hemorrhoid. You can have genital hemorrhoid. You can have anal hemorrhoid. Okay. It says when it's extreme burning, that's the itchiness because why? Because you've got pubic light. And with the sword, that's death. And with blasting and with mildew. Blasting goes into what? When you start to have blisters now. And with mildew, that's fungus. Bacterial infection, that's what he's talking about. It says they shall pursue thee until thou perish. Jump down to verse 27. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 27. Read. The Lord will smite thee with the pot of Egypt mm -hmm. and with the emeralds. Yeah, then with the emerald, the emerald goes into inflammation and blasting and mildew. Right? And with the scab. And with the scab. That's what you saw there on the video. Because the scab goes into what? Pubic lice. So pubic lice will be, will be causing what? The scab on your genital area. For both men and women. Come on. And with the itch. And when you itch, when you scratch, it's going to cause mildew, which is bacterial infection. Right? Whereof thou canst not be healed. Whereof thou cannot be healed. Now read verse 51. Read start of verse 59. Deuteronomy 28, verse 59. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 59. Come on. Then the Lord will make thy plagues wonderful. Mm. He says, I'm going to make your plagues wonderful. Meaning they're going to itch. They're going to, you're going to, they're going to itch. You're going to scratch. You're going to cause bacterial infection. It's going to cause inflammation, redness. You're going to increase the intensity of what? Of the itchiness and of the pestilence between your legs. Right? And the plagues of thy seed, even great plagues. Even great plagues, right? And of long continuance. And of long continuance. That's why it says, which cannot be healed. Long continuance. There's no cure, you're just getting treatment. Right? And sore sicknesses and of long continuance. Sore sicknesses and of long continuance. I mean, it's going to be painful. Go ahead. Moreover, he will bring upon thee all the diseases of Egypt. Stop right there. He will bring upon thee all the diseases of Egypt, all the plagues that the Lord used to plague the Egyptians. The Lord says, if you don't keep the commandments, worshiping other gods, this is what's going to happen. One of those gods that the children of Israel will be worshiping in the lands of their captivity is what? The God of uncleanness, Beelzebub, Lord of the flies. You understand? Flies and lies, uncleanness. The most High God says we will be worshiping that idol as a nation. That's what we're reading it. He says, because of that, I'm gonna plague you with the diseases of Egypt. Come on. Which thou wast afraid of, uh -huh. and they shall cleave unto thee. And they shall cleave unto you. Because we were afraid. When we saw the Egyptians being plagued, that brought fear upon us. The Lord says. The same diseases that you are afraid of, that you saw upon your enemies, the Egyptians, I'm going to bring upon you. I'm going to bring upon you if you break these laws. Go ahead. Also, every sickness and every plague, which is not written in the book of this law, mm. then will the Lord bring upon thee until thou be destroyed. It says, moreover, all the, the sicknesses that are outside of what I mentioned, I'm going to bring them upon you. You understand? Meaning the sicknesses that were not even in Egypt, the Lord says, I'm going to bring those diseases upon you until thou be destroyed if you don't repent. Give me that in First Samuel now, 5 and 8. Okay? Because this pubic, pubic lice, okay? Yes, it's going to affect the pubic area, your genital areas, your genitals for both men and women. Watch this. First Samuel chapter 5 and 8. First Samuel chapter 5 and 8. Come on. They sent therefore and gathered all the lords of the Philistines unto them and said, What shall we do with the ark of the God of Israel? And they answered, Let the ark of the God of Israel be carried about unto Gath. 
-hmm. And they carried the ark of the God of Israel about Tida. Because they take him the ark of the covenant, the Philistine. Go ahead. And it was so that after they had carried it about, the hand of the Lord was against the city with a very great destruction. Now, this is how the Lord is going to destroy them. Watch this. Go ahead. And he smote the men of the city, both small and great. And they had emeralds in their secret parts. What did they have? And they had emeralds in their secret parts. They had emeralds in their secret parts, meaning they had genital warts. They had genital hemorrhoids. They had inflammation on their balls. That's what the Lord did to them. You understand? That goes into what pubic lies, where you find yourself, where you're just itching, you are in pain, because the problem was, the problem that is causing the pain is that you scratch, it causes a bacterial infection, fungus, which eventually will cause what? Hemorrhoids in your secret parts. The most I don't play, okay? Genital what? Give me, give me that in Psalm 38, verse 5. Psalm chapter 38, verse 5. Because remember it says, pubic lies is transmitted through what? Sexually, STI, sexually transmitted infections. Psalm chapter 38, verse 5. Read that. Psalm chapter 38, verse 5. Come on. My wounds stink. My wounds do what? My wounds stink. My wounds stink. These wounds, what is he talking about? Talk about his balls. His balls are smelly. Because the most high God plagued him with a disease because he slept with another man's wife, Uriah's wife. The Lord is plaguing King David. He says, my wounds stink, okay, smelly balls. Go ahead. And are corrupt because of my foolishness. And are corrupt because of my foolishness. So brothers that are masturbating and all of that, that means you have smelly balls. It's not an if or maybe it's a fact. You've got smelly balls. Oh, yes, yes. Read it again. Verse 5. Of Psalms chapter 38, verse 5. Come on. My wounds stink mm -hmm. and are corrupt because of my foolishness. And are corrupt because of my foolishness. Stinking balls. Jump down to verse 7. Psalms chapter 38, verse 7. Mm -hmm. For my loins are filled with a loathsome disease. You see that part right there? The loins is the wounds that stink because of a because of what? A loathsome disease. STD. Pubic life. Okay? Read on. And there is no soundness in my flesh. Because he was in pain. The most high God plagued him with the disease of Egypt of a long continuance. Okay? So that's why both men and women, make sure this is going into the men now. You brothers, make sure that you go to the doctor, you get a medical report. You exercise, you eat healthy. You understand? Go to the doctor. Find out where you at. Find out what the doctor says. Find out if you've got um, genital lice, pubic lice. Investigate. Find these things out. That's part of your repentance. That's part of your journey of repentance. You understand? Head lice, body lice, and pubic lice. You've got pubic lice, there's a high chance you've got body one. You've got a lice in your head. Guess what? Go and investigate. Find out. Go to the doctor, go to the clinic, they will investigate and tell you what's going on. Because if you don't get rid of this thing now, that thing that you don't want to get rid of is going to shame you the day you get married. Because now imagine the sister, she's taking heed to this. Guess what? No, the sister will not end up with you if, unless if the sister is a simp. Because the sister will make sure that during the proving process, you bring your medical, she brings her medical. And then you can be able to, the two of you can show each other, okay. When you see that, you can say, listen, this is my medical report. She can also say, this is my medical report. And then you exchange. You say, okay, everything is all good and all that. Okay. But if you don't do that, the sister don't ask for one, or you got, you sister, you as a sister, you've got one, the brother don't produce one. He says, no, but you know, I know the scriptures. Listen, shut the hell up. Let him produce the medical report. Okay. And vice versa. Understand that thing, okay? Now, watch this. Um, let's read now. Let me share my screen so we can deal with it. Before I deal with the sisters, I'm going to deal with the next step. Yes. Pubic lice. Let me share my screen real quick. 
Okay, now I want you to read that. You see my screen? Yes, sir. Okay, read that. Now this goes into cubic lives in terms of what? Affecting the men, the brothers. Read that. Reading from healthline.com. What causes growing smells in people born with a penis? With a penis. So you see the you see the, this is like LGBT type of talk. It's trying to be politically correct, but we can see the writing. The writing is on the wall. Keep going. People with penises are also vulnerable to infections and other conditions that may cause unusual and strong smelling odors. Mm -hmm. The unusual and strong smelling odors. That's the smelly ball. You've got smelly your ball. You've got smelly bolitos. Then days are over. You must stop there. You must repent. Cannot be walking around with smelly bolitos. Read that thing again. People with penises are also vulnerable to infections and mm -hmm. other conditions that may cause unusual and strong smelling odors. Read. These include the following examples. Come on. Hyperhidrosis. Okay, hyperhidrosis, that's one of the conditions that cause strong smelling odors. But we know what, what is causing all this. The Lord is the one that's doing all this. It's not hyperhidrosis. The most I is doing it. Go ahead. Hyperhidrosis is a condition that causes excessive sweating. Excessive sweating. Read. Men are especially vulnerable to this in the groin area due to testicles that can rub against their skin. You see that thing? Hold on, whoa, 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 whoa. It says men are especially vulnerable to this in the groin area due to testicles that rub, uh, that can rub against their skin. We know, watch this. Creating friction mm. and increasing sweating. Now, hold this. Let's go back to Leviticus 21. Let's see who's doing this. Leviticus 21 verse 20. Leviticus chapter 21 verse 20. Mm-hmm or crook-backed, or a dwarf, or that has a blemish in his eye, or be scurvy, or scabbed, or has his stones broken. Or has his stones broken. So this broken stones, that smelly ball, because they are what, they are not, they are not the way they're supposed to be in terms of diseases and smell, bacterial infection on your testicles. That's why it says what? It says, or has his stones broken. Okay, so the most high God is the one that's doing this thing. Go ahead. The extra sweat can attract fungus and bacteria, mm -hmm. which leads to bad smells. You see that thing? It says the extra sweat can attract fungus and bacteria, which leads to bad smells. Mm -mm. It's not because of the sweat. Give me that in Psalm 38 again. It's not because of the sweat. You know, Esau likes to just use this dumb reasoning capacity. Esau has a very bad reasoning capacity. Okay, watch this. Psalm 38, read verse 5 again. It's not because of sweat. It's not because of, because Negroes are going to use this and say, no, it's not because of an STD. It's not because I'm choking the chicken. No, it's just because, you know, me, I sweat a lot. What the hell is this? Read that. Psalms chapter 38, verse 5. Read. My wounds stink mm -hmm. and are corrupt because of my foolishness. No, no, because of sweat. Because of my foolishness. No, no, no. Because of sweat. Because of my foolishness. Because of my foolishness. It says my wounds stink and are corrupt because of my foolishness. Give me that in First Samuel 13, verse 13. Let's see what it means when it says because of my foolishness. Read that. First Samuel 13, verse 13. First Samuel chapter 13, verse 13. Read. And Samuel said to Saul, thou hast done foolishly. Thou hast not kept the commandment of the Lord thy God, which he commanded thee, for now would the Lord have established thy kingdom upon Israel forever. So now you see that thing, it says Saul has done foolishly because he, has not, he did not keep the commandments of the Lord his God. That's the foolishness. So go back to Psalms 38 verse 5. Okay, come on. The book of Psalms, chapter 38 verse 5. My wounds stink and are corrupt because of my foolishness. Because of breaking God's law. He says, my wounds stink and are corrupt because of my foolishness. Not because of sweat. No, because of foolishness. Because of breaking God's commandments. Jump down to verse 7. 
the book of Psalms, chapter 38, verse 7. Mm -hmm. For my loins are filled with a lonesome disease. Right. And there is no soundness in my flesh. You see that thing? So he's letting you know the wounds that stink is the, his loins, his balls are stinking because of what? Because of a lonesome disease, pubic life, fungus, bacterial infection, not because of sweat. No, no, no. Because of what? Because of foolishness, breaking of God's laws, sexual intercourse, masturbation, and all that. Mm -hmm. Now, let's go back to the article now. Read that part again. When it says excessive buildup, where was we yet? Yeah, the extra sweat. Read that. The extra sweat can extract fungus and bacteria, which leads to bad smells. It says the extra sweat can attract fungus and bacteria, excuse me, which leads to bad smell, meaning smelly balls. Okay, go ahead. This is treated with cornstarch to absorb excess sweet sweat. No, 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 no. So this, no, no, not cornstarch. No, no, keeping of God's laws. Wash your behind. Wash between your legs. Okay? That's what the Lord is saying. Not cornstarch. Mm -mm. Washing yourself and eating health exercises. Okay, let's read that part right there. Smegma. Smegma. Smegma can occur in uncircumcised males. Stop right there. Smegma can occur in uncircumcised males. You brothers that are still wearing caps on your penis, you've got smegma. You know, it's a white, thick, gooey, gooey stuff. Yeah. You brothers that are not circumcised, you better go to the hospital and chop that thing off. Go ahead. Causing dead skin cells, mm -hmm. fluids, right. and oils to build up. You see that thing? And this is causing dead skin cells, fluids, and oils to build up. That means there's some nasty stuff that is coming out there. By the way, circumcision is a law. You men that are not circumcised, you better go to the hospital and chop that thing. Go to the hospital and chop the cap off because guess what? That's how you make sure your, your, your penis is hygiene. No sister going to be laying with you when you're still wearing a cap. Oh, hell no. Okay, come on. As a result, smegma that is thick, mm. white. Whoa. Go ahead. As a result, smegma that is thick, whitish, and has a strong odor can build up underneath the foreskin. You see that thing? It will build up underneath the foreskin. So you brothers that are still walking around with those cats, it's time to repent. You need to go to the hospital and chop them stuff off. You must chop it off. Because guess what? You want to get rid of smegma. Thick, whitish, and that has a strong smelling odor underneath your foreskin. Go ahead. Excess buildup can cause swelling redness and discomfort you see that thing so you don't want that okay come on if left untreated smegma can lead to balanitis 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 removing smegma involves pulling back the foreskin and cleaning gently with soap and warm water no 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 just remove the foreskin okay just remove the thing why are you struggling and all that? Yeah. Oh, mm -mm. brother, listen. We understand that when you come into this truth, your faith is still weak. Okay, which is fine. Because our forefather Abraham, the Lord dealt with him because before he was circumcised. But our forefather Abraham, when he was told to do it, he did it. He circumcised the, uh, his foreskin. So likewise, we must do the same. You understand? As part of your hygiene, you understand practices, good hygiene. Okay, read that. Bolonitis. Bolonitis. No, no, not no. Bolonitis. Okay. Bolonitis. Uh -huh. Bolonitis is a condition that usually affects uncircumcised men. Read. Really? Causing an infection and irritation in the foreskin. Go ahead. Symptoms include mm. unusual discharge. Oh, no. Mm. Brother, if you're still wearing that cap, please make sure that you see your nearest doctor and remove it. Okay? Because you don't want this. Unusual discharge. 
Go ahead. Itching. Mm. Pain. You don't want that. Tight appearing foreskin. Tight appearing foreskin. It's time to, to fix. See your nearest doctor. Go ahead. Some people also have problems with painful urination. You're going to experience painful urination. The most like God is the one that's doing it. It's not because of sweat. It's not because of extra sweat. Okay, come on. Treatments for balanitis include topical creams to reduce inflammation and itching, mm -hmm. as well as oral antibiotics and antifungals to treat the infection. Guess what? You listen, see the doctor, but most importantly above all, you must change your diet, exercise, okay? And wash your behind, okay? Now, um, okay, read that. Non-gonococcal urethritis. Read that. Non-gonococcal urethritis. Mm -hmm. Non-gonococcal urethritis is an inflammation of the urethra. Read. Tube where urine flows through before exiting the penis. You see that thing? Now, you know, it's funny that, the, you know, I think about this. Now, you know, there was a brother that, uh, 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 an older man, you know, he's an old man. This one day we were just talking about stuff and he said something. He said, you see, he says, the, the, this non-gonococcal urethritis is the non-gonococcal urethritis is an inflammation of the urethra. True where urine flows through before exiting the penis. Here's the thing. He said something. He said, um, common, many, many brothers, our brothers in Israel, is that they've got um, gonorrhea and they don't even know that they do. And as I explained, what do you mean by that? He said, when if you know, if you want to know that you've got this thing, you've got gonorrhea, you've got this, this, this type of a thing, where your urethra is affected, are he said, be, when you go to the bathroom and you, you pee, you want to take a piss, it says, before you take a piss and you can't, and in the only way for you, to, before you can take a piss, you have to fart first. He says, you've got gonorrhea. Anybody know what I'm talking? Any, anybody understand what I'm saying? Yes, sir. It says, so before you can actually urinate, you have to fart first. And then the urine comes out nice. He says, you got gonorrhea. So if you experience in that, see your nearest doctor. Mm. Or you must give leadership a call. We will prepare some herbs for you. Okay? There's some herbs for this thing. Read that thing again. Non-gonococcal urethritis is because an I know Negroes will not give leadership a call because <laughs> <laughs> so you either you're gonna live with it or you're gonna go and, and appear in front of Esau who's gonna keep the things that will mess you up. <laughs> okay. So contact your camp leader. Okay. <laughs> Read that. <laughs> Breathe again. non gonococcal urethritis <laughs> is an inflammation of the urethra. Go ahead. Tube where the urine flows through before exiting the penis. Read on. Common causes include chlamydia infections mm. as well as injuries of the urethra. Come on. Such as from catheter, catheter trauma. Read. The extra presence of bacteria can cause an unpleasant smell. You see what the Bible is? You see what you see what is saying? But the Lord is telling you, he's the one that will bring these diseases upon you because of what? Because of breaking God's, because of breaking his law. He says the extra presence of bacteria can cause an unpleasant smell. Okay? So, now, watch this. I'm going to switch gears now. I'm going to deal with the sisters. Okay, I'm gonna deal with the sisters. Let's scroll up. Let's scroll up. I deal with the men. And I'm gonna deal with the sisters now. Now read that. Is it normal to smell myself through my pants? Mm, that's a heavy question. Read it again. 
Is it normal to smell myself through my pants? It's not normal. It's not normal to smell yourself through your pants. Okay? That means something going on down there. Okay? Read that. Your body is full of weird and wonderful surprises. Come on. Some of them may be, unfortunately, smelly. Not, not maybe. They are smelly. Okay? Read. While a temporary bad smell right before its, its shower time is common, a smell so strong you can smell it through your pants can, could indicate other causes for concern. Some serious causes for concern. Okay, come on. Keep reading for some of the reasons why you may smell yourself through your pants and ways to treat the underlying condition. Okay, read that. What causes growing? Read that. What causes growing smells in people born with a vagina? Uh-huh. Now let's see. What causing what causes the smelly coochie? Let's see what Iswa has to say. Watch this. The vagina relies on a pH balance to maintain tissue health. pH balance. Let's let's before we continue, let's go to let's go there. Okay. Now read that. Everything you need to know about maintaining your vaginal pH balance. He says, everything you need to know about maintaining your vaginal pH balance. Now read that. What is vaginal pH? What is vaginal pH? Mm -hmm. pH is a measurement of how acidic or alkaline basic is a, a substance is. So pH is a, measure, is a measurement of how acidic or alkaline a substance is. Okay, come on. The scale runs from 0 to 14. Mm -hmm. A pH of less than 7 is considered acidic. Come on. And a pH of more than 7 is basic. A pH of more than 7 is alkaline or basic. Okay, now let's see. Read. What does any of this have to do with your vagina? Let's see. What does it have to do with your coochie? Go ahead. The pH level of your vagina whether it's acidic or basic, plays an important part in determining whether it's healthy. Mm, go ahead. Keep reading to learn more about healthy pH levels, how to correct an imbalance, and how to maintain overall vaginal health. Me? What is a normal vaginal pH? Come on. A normal vaginal pH level is between 3.8 and 4.5. So Which is moderately acidic. Is a normal vaginal pH level is between 3.8 and 4.5, which is moderately acidic. This is less than 7. So that's moderately, moderately acidic. Between 3.8 and 4.5. That's what Iso said. Go ahead. However, what constitutes a normal pH can vary slightly based on your stage of life. Uh-huh. Meaning your age. Let's see. Go ahead. For example, during your reproductive years, ages 15 to 49, your no, vaginal... No, no, no. reproductive years don't start at age 15. They start at 20 and up because that's the age of an adult according to the scripts. So Issa is talking garbage here. Read that again. For example, during your reproductive years, ages 15 to 49, your vaginal pH should be below or equal to 4.5. Uh -huh. So if you are less than 49 years old, it says your pH, your vaginal pH should be equal or below 4.5. Okay, come on. But before menstruation and after menopause, a healthy pH tends to be higher than 4.5. Okay, come on. Read. So why does vaginal pH matter? An acidic vaginal environment is protective. Mm. It creates a barrier that prevents unhealthy bacteria and yeast from multiplying too quickly and causing infection. I want you to read that statement again. Read it again. So why does vaginal pH matter? An acidic vaginal environment is protective. Mm -hmm. It creates a barrier that prevents unhealthy bacteria and yeast from multiplying.
multiplying too quickly and causing infection. It says, there is says, an acidic vaginal environment is protective. This acidic is talking about 3.8, between 3.8 and 4.5. It says that pH level is protective. Is that it creates a barrier that prevents unhealthy bacteria and yeast from multiplying too quickly and causing infection. Hmm. But what causes, what maintains a 3.8 and a 4.5 pH level? Give me Deuteronomy 22 verse 5. What prevents it? What prevents this thing? What prevents it is knowing this law right here as a sister. Okay, watch this. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 22, verse 5. Go ahead. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. Wait. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. For all that do so are abomination unto the Lord thy God. So the most that God is saying, a woman is not allowed to wear pants. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. For all that do so are abomination unto the Lord their God. So women wearing pants, Guess what? You're not going to have a normal acidic vaginal environment that will protect you from what? Unhealthy bacteria and yeast infection. The most high God is a genius. So sisters that don't know, don't obey this law, if they don't want to obey it, guess what? They don't have an, a, a normal acidic vaginal environment that will protect them from catching, having, catching unhealthy bacteria and yeast from happening on their coochie. That's what the Lord is saying. First Timothy 2 verse 9. Watch this. First book of Timothy chapter 2 verse 9. Come on. In like manner also, that women adorn themselves in modest apparel, mm -hmm. with shamefacedness, Come on. Sobriety. not with braided hair, or gold, or pearls, or costly array. I want to show you something heavy with this verse. It says, in like manner also, women must, women, that women adorn themselves in modest apparel. Modest apparel will make sure that you maintain a healthy pH vaginal level, right? It says, with shame faces, because you're going to have what? You have shame faceness. That means that, guess what? You will maintain your shame faceness and your sobriety, your character and all that. No, now, if you don't want to obey this law as a sister, you want to wear pants and all that, guess what? It means you have no shame and you don't have sobriety. That means you don't even care how you smell. You can smell your coochie through your panties and your what? And your leggings and your miniskirts and your bum shorts. You, you see that thing? So if you're wearing mini skirts and bum shorts and all of that, that means your bum also is the smell. Mm. Some nasty stuff here. The most I got is if you if because if you dress like that, your coochie smells by default. That means your bum also smells by default because both of them are not clean. Both of them are unhygienic. You see that thing? This is what the most high God is saying. That's why the Lord is saying, listen, change your dress code. Because when you're wearing pants, guess what? Your, P, your vaginal pH level will be higher than 4.5. Yeah. It will be higher than 4.5, which means you'll get unhealthy bacteria and you'll get yeast infection. And the unhealthy bacteria plus the yeast infection will cause discharges, which will cause smelly coochie. That's what the, the most that God is giving us what? He's giving us, he's giving the sisters way of ways of being healthy. Isaiah 3.16. Let's go back to Isaiah. Go back to Isaiah. Chapter 3, verse 16. The book of Isaiah. Chapter 3, verse 16. Come on. Moreover, the Lord says, because the daughters of Zion are haughty, Mm -hmm. We walk with stretch forth necks and wanton eyes. Make sure walking, eyes. Walking and minting as they go. Mm -hmm. And making a tingling with their feet. You know what's heavy about this verse? Is that the daughters of Zion are hot, meaning they are proud. They walk with stretch forth necks, meaning you cannot tell them nothing. It says, and wanton eyes. 
meaning sexual eyes, seductive eyes. They seduce men. Not only that, they seduce men walking and mincing as they go. They like to shake their bum. That means they're shaking their smelly bums. Yeah. Their bums are smelly and their cushions are smelly, but they're shaking them anyway. Walking and mincing as they go and making a tinkling with their feet. That's what the Lord is saying. Go ahead. Verse 17. Come on. Therefore the Lord will smite with a scab the crown of the head of the daughters of Zion. Mm -hmm. And the Lord will discover their secret parts. So the most that God will give them a head light, right? Not only that, but the most that God will smite and discover their secret parts with pubic light. You understand? Jump down to verse 14. I mean verse 24. Come on. With the book of Isaiah, chapter 3, verse 24. Mm -hmm. And it shall come to pass that instead of a sweet smell, there shall be stink. Stop right there. Instead of a sweet smell on their secret parts, the most High God says they are going to stink. Remember what we read for the men in Psalm 38, verse 7? It says, my, Psalm 38, verse 5, my wounds stink. Now he's talking to the women. It says what? Instead of them smelling sweet, it says they are going to stink on their couch. Because guess what? They are wearing pants. They are haughty. They don't want to submit. They shake their smelly bums and coochies. The most High God says, Instead of them smelling sweet, he says, I'm going to want, I'm going to make your vagina to stink, your bum to stink. Go ahead. And instead of a girl, a rent. You see that thing? They're going to have big stomach, right? And instead of well set hair, baldness. You see that thing? Baldness, head light, alopecia. Go ahead. And instead of a stomacher, a girding of sackcloth. The most that God says, he's going to make them to be for our. The, the, instead of a girdle and rent, that they are going to be shapeless. Then instead of a stomacher, a getting of sex cloth, they're going to have big stomach. Go ahead. And burning instead of beauty. That's the itch. They're going to itch down there. The instead of a burning instead of beauty, they're going to burn. Extreme burning on their couch, they will scratch. It will cause a bacterial infection. Not only that, it's going to cause this infection and all that. You understand? Genital warts, they're gonna have stuff like that. Pubic lights, they are coochie with men. It doesn't matter how many times they can they can they can put um they can put their makeup on and all of that, creams on and whatnot, they can paint their face. Guess what? The most that God said they are you still gonna smell the coochie through the perfume, you're gonna smell the bum through the deodorant, whatever perfume they use. Guess what? Whatever lotion they use, they say this lotion has perfume in it. The Lord says, mm -mm, "You are still. I'm gonna still make sure that your coochie smells through all of that." That's what the most that God be saying. But the sisters do not listen. Give me that in uh, Numbers five twenty one. You know what? Before we get there, let's continue. Now, I want you to read that part again. Read that. Read that statement again. I like the next part, but read that first. A high vaginal pH level above 4.5 provides the perfect environment for unhealthy bacteria to grow. Having a high vaginal pH puts you at risk for these infections. So the sisters that wear pants, the sisters that are haughty, you understand, wanton eyes and all that, guess what? They have a high but they have a high vaginal pH, which puts them at risk for these infections. Now read that. But bacterial vaginosis. Read that. V bacterial vaginosis. Uh -huh. BV is a bacterial overgrowth condition that causes a fishy odor. Oh no. Read that thing again. Bacterial vaginosis, BV. Uh -huh is a bacterial overgrowth condition that causes a fishy odor. It's a bacterial vaginosis. Wearing pants causes bacterial vaginosis. Because women wearing pants, your pH, your vaginal pH level goes high. It goes higher than the normal pH level. You understand? That creates a protective environment for you. So all the sisters that wear pants, they all smell like tuna. It's a fact. 
biblical. The most like God is saying this thing is there's what? They, that means they've got bacterial vaginosis, sisters that were paired. Keep going. Along with an unusual gray, white, or yellow vaginal discharge. Mm, yuck. It says, along with an unusual gray, white, or yellow vaginal discharge. Mm. Listen, all the all this that I don't care how much the how much they can play their head. Mm -mm. If you wear pants, you don't submit to what the Bible says as a sister. You are not feminine. You want to act like a man. You want to listen. The most like God says, this is what He will plague you with: bacterial vaginosis. You're gonna have a fishy smell, unusual gray, white, yellow vaginal discharge. That's some yucky stuff. Go ahead. It can also result in vaginal itchiness and mm -hmm. burning during urination. Is the extreme burning like we read in Deuteronomy 28? You understand? Deuteronomy 28, we read that thing. Now, keep going. BV isn't necessarily harmful in itself, but women who have this condition are at increased risk for more serious infections like human papillomavirus. That's HPV, that, that's common in black women with? HPV. Mm -hmm. Herpes simplex virus herpes, and HIV. Herpes is also common and HIV. So the most that God is telling you that women wearing pants, you understand, bum shorts, mini skirts and all that, guess what? They have a, they, they, they have bacterial vaginosis. That bacterial vaginosis, guess what? Again, they are having sex. They are having sex. They are not married and all that. They are having abortions and whatnot. It says, guess what? That means they have HPV. That means they have herpes. That means many of them, they are HIV positive. But you're not going to know it. You, you see this thing? The most is a genius. The most is a genius. Okay? Hmm. That's some heavy stuff. I want you to read this thing. Read that. Read that. We're going to read that. Watch this. Trichomonoasis, trick, is a sexually transmitted disease, STD, caused by the parasite Trichomonas vaginalysis. Hmm. Read on. In the United States, it affects an estimate 3.7 million people. This is, and by the way, this is a first world country. What do you think is happening in the third world country where women are doing whatever the hell they want? Keep reading. Trick usually doesn't cause symptoms in the majority of those infected, but it can increase your risk for other more serious STDs like HIV. So that means that sisters that you, when you sisters go and do the medical check, you must check for these things as well. You must check for HPV. You must check for herpes. You must check for H HIV. You must also check for your pH if everything is all good. Just because your, EPA, your pH might be good, it doesn't mean you don't have these. You must check for them as well. So brothers, the medical record must have, must come back with these diseases being no meaning they must come with, they must come, they must come negative. You must not come back positive. Now, read that. The, an acidic vagina, read that. An acidic vagina usually doesn't cause disease. But if the acidity rises too much, it might reduce your fertility. Mm. Sperm thrive in an alkaline environment. The optimal pH for them to swim is between 7.0 and 8.5. That's alkaline, right? Read that. During sex, the pH level inside the vagina temporarily rises, making the normal acidic environment more alkaline to protect the sperm so they can make their way to the egg. Mm, this is heavy. You know why many of sisters cannot conceive? It's because of this right here. Many sisters cannot conceive this because under normal circumstances, 
your VH must be between 3.8 and 4.5. During sex, it rises temporarily to be what between 7.0 to 8.5 to protect the stem so that the stem can make their way to the egg. That's some heavy stuff. The Mosai is a genius. This is not Esau's science. Mm -mm. This is the most high God's science. The most high know what he's doing. And another thing also is that you disrespect your husband. You don't want to submit. The most high God will just make sure that you are what? He locks your womb and you don't conceive. Mm. Heavy stuff. Now, watch this. Mm, 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 mm. Read there. Symptoms and signs and symptoms of an unbalanced vaginal pH. Signs and symptoms of an unbalanced vaginal pH. Come on. A high pH level that leads to BV or other infection may cause symptoms like a foul or fishy smell. A foul or fishy smell. Go ahead. Unusual white, gray, or green discharge. Mm, even green. The other time they said what yellow, right? Red. Vaginal itching. Mm. Burning when you urinate. Burning when you urinate. Now watch this. Give me the book of Numbers five verse twenty one. Let's the deal with the book of Numbers five verse twenty one. Read what you got. The book of Numbers chapter five verse twenty one. Come on. Then the priest shall charge the woman with an oath of cursing. Mm -hmm. And the priest shall say unto the woman, The Lord make thee a curse and an oath among thy people. Come on. When the Lord doth make thy thigh to rot mm -hmm. and thy belly to swell. You see what the Lord will do? The most like God, this is how he plays the black woman. Is that he's going to make your thigh to rot, which is your vagina, and your belly to swell. It's going to be as though you're pregnant. Read. And this water that causes the curse shall go into thy bowels to make thy belly to swell and thy thigh to rot. Mm -hmm. And the woman shall say, Amen, Amen. So now the most High God is the one that says, I'm going to make your pushy to smell because you don't want to humble down to what this Bible says. You don't want to dress like a woman. You don't want to act like a woman. You don't want to do womenly stuff. You all up in a man's face. He says, guess what? All the things that that is going to make you not be desirable as a woman i'm going to put them on you understand that's what the lord is saying right here it's not just going to be the smelly vagina okay now watch this give me hmm let me see if i want to go there hold on a second let's go back because I had to deal with the I had to deal with the the pH. Okay. Now let me share my screen once again. We must go through this stuff. Okay. Mm. Now read it. What causes growing smells in people born with a vagina? Many women can't make this stuff up. Why can't they just say women? Now read it. What causes growing smells in people born with a vagina? Mm -hmm. The vagina relies on a pH balance to maintain tissue health. If infections or other changes occur, the disrupted pH balance can lead to unusual orders. Mm -hmm. The following are some examples of these potential causes. Go ahead. BV. Bacterial vaginosis. Right. Bacterial vaginosis is a condition that commonly, af commonly affects women of childbearing age and occurs due to an overgrowth of bacteria. An overgrowth of bacteria. It says women of childbearing age. You talk about young women of marriageable age. You understand? And occurs due to an overgrowth of bacteria because they wear pants, they act like men, they drink like men, they don't eat healthy, they don't exercise. You understand? Okay, they are mainly women. Read. Symptoms include unusual or excessive gray or white vaginal discharge. That's why the Lord says, are you going to make your vagina to rot? Read. Strong odor 
that may be described as fishy or foul smell. Read itching and burning sensations in the groin. Mm -hmm. Oh, this one right here. When I read it, I was like, what the hell? Read that. Trapped tampon. Some sisters have tampon traps in their vagina. It says a tampon may be trapped in your coochie. Go ahead. Sometimes an inserted tampon may turn sideways or the tampon string can move up into the vagina. Mm. As a result, you may forget about the tampon or have such difficulty removing it that it remains there for longer than intended. Mm, mm, mm. Go ahead. Symptoms of a stuck tampon include discolored, foul-smelling discharge, mm. pain when urinating, Come on. fever, swelling in or around the vagina. Give me to Tommy 28. Because you might think, you know, they say, no, if he always likes to come up with these things, no, a stuck tampon. No, 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 no. Get you Tommy 28. I'm going to show you it's not a stuck tampon. It's not because the tampon is stuck down, it's stuck up there. Mm -mm. You told me 28 verse 22. Let's see if the most that God is saying is because of a stuck tampon. Read it. The book of Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 22. Come on. The Lord shall smite thee with a consumption and with mm -hmm. the feet. Stop right there. With a what now? With the, with the consumption and with the fever. That's the fever right there. Not because of a stuck tempo. The Lord is the one that will do it. With a fever, come on. And with, the, and with an inflammation. With an inflammation is a discolored, foul-smelling discharge. You understand? Foul-smelling discharge. Swelling in or around the vagina. That's inflammation. Come on. And with an extreme burning. With an extreme burning. Pain when urinating. Go ahead. And with the sword, mm -hmm. and with blasting, and with maltu. Blasting and maltu goes into bacterial infection and fungus. Read. And they shall pursue you, and they shall pursue thee until thou perish. Until thou perish. You see that? It's not, it's not because of a stuck tampon. He's always had to come up with this stuff. No, it is because a tampon is stuck in there. Because the sister will use that and say, no, it's not because I have sex. It's not because I went outside my marriage. No, it's because I have a stuck tampon in there. Do you brothers understand that? Yes, sir. Uh -huh. Yes, sir. So, because they might say, no, the reason why this is going on is because there's a stuck tampon. No, it's not because of a stuck tampon. Now, let's see. How to get rid of this stuff? Let's see the solutions. Read that. What causes growing smells in all people? Both men and women now. We come in full circle. Read that. What causes growing smells in all people? Mm -hmm. Some underlying causes of growing smells affect both people with penises and people with vaginas. You see, like, I mean, what the hell? Why isn't Isu just saying both men and women? This is crazy. You know why he's saying this? Because just because you have a penis doesn't mean you are a man. Just because you have a vagina doesn't mean you are a woman. You see how he's writing things now? Can you, do you, do you men and women, do you see this? You brothers yes, and sisters? Yes, sir. As, uh, some yes, sir. underlying causes of growing smells affect both people with penises and people with vaginas. Why can't Iso just say male and female? Because they are telling you that, guess what? Just because you have a penis doesn't mean you are a man. Just because you have a vagina doesn't mean you are a female. That's what Iswa is implying. Iswa is the devil. Man, this so-called white man is the devil the Bible speaks of. I'm telling you. That's what he's saying, right? Because I was like, what? why is he writing stuff like this? Now, all praises to the Most High. I saw this thing. Read that thing again. What causes growing smells in all people? Some underlying causes of growing smells affect both people with penises and people with vaginas. Examples of these include the following. Mm -hmm. Poor hygiene. You see that? 
One of the main reasons why you've got what you've got a uh, pubic, pubic, uh, pubic line. You understand? Hemorrhoids on your vagina, on, on your penis and all that. Is it poor hygiene? Poor hygiene. Because the most High God told us what we must do in order to wash our behind. Okay? Now read that. You know what? Give me First Peter 3 verse 21. First Peter chapter 3 verse 21. Watch this. First book of Peter chapter 3 verse 21. Come on. The light figure were unto even baptism that also now save us. Mm -hmm. Not the putting away of the filth of the flesh. Stop right there. So the water baptism, the Lord is saying it was what? Because what does water do? Water puts away the filth of the flesh. That's it. So poor hygiene, if you don't have, if you have poor hygiene, guess what? You're going to experience pubic light for, for, both, for both men and women. That's why it says not putting away of the filth of the flesh because that's what water does. To put away the filth of your flesh, meaning wash your behind. Read. But the answer of a good conscience toward God uh -huh. by the resurrection of Jesus Christ. You see that thing? Because your conscience will tell you, I must wash my behind. You see that thing? So poor hygiene is against God's commandment. Good hygiene is according to the laws of God. Now read it. Poor hygiene. Mm -hmm. Refraining from regular bathing can lead to dirt. Stop right there. The fear of water can lead to death. Filth of the flesh. Read. Sweat. Mm -hmm. And its skin cell build up that leads to strong smells through your clothes. Oh, that's some heavy stuff right there. Keep going. You can reduce these effects by showering regularly and washing with mild soap and warm water. The, guess, guess what? This is written in the Bible. Because Israel didn't know how to do this. We taught him how to bath. So the most High God taught us how to bath to be clean. You understand? Give me Ephesians 5 verse 26. Ephesians 5 verse 26. Chapter 5, verse 26. Go ahead. That he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water. With the, the what? With the washing of water. With the washing of water. With the washing of water. The washing of water. You must wash yourself with water. The most that God is telling us over and over, wash your behind. Okay? So, poor hygiene will lead to what? Pubic life. Bacterial infection between your legs for both men and women. That's what the Lord is saying. Okay. So guess what? We must we must wash yourself. Let's deal with the men now. Give me the book of Exodus, chapter 30, verse 17. Washing your behind, you men, brothers. Okay, Exodus 30, read verse 17. The book of Exodus, chapter 30, verse 17. Come on. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Thou shalt also make a lever of brass, mm -hmm. and his foot also of brass, Come on. and wash with all. To wash with all, to wash with all, to wash with all. Okay, come on. To wash with all, mm -hmm. and thou shalt put it between the tabernacle of the congregation and the altar, and thou shalt put water therein. Thou shalt put water therein. The labor of brass. Let's see what it looks like. Okay. Let me share my screen. So you can see what the scriptures is talking about. Read that verse again, verse 70, verse 18. That's the labor of brass right there. The book of Exodus, chapter 30, verse 18. Thou shalt also make a laver of brass, and his foot also of brass, to wash withal. Mm -hmm. And thou shalt put it between the tabernacle of the congregation and the altar. And thou shalt put water therein. Thou shalt put water therein, come on. For Aaron and his sons 
shall wash their hands and their feet. They eat. Come on. When they go into the tabernacle of the congregation, they shall wash with water. Read. Right. That they die not. You see that thing? It says they shall wash. They shall wash with water that they die not before they go into the, the tabernacle of the congregation. You come to camp, you come among the brothers and sisters, make sure that your behind is washed. Read on. Or when they come near to the altar to minister, mm -hmm. to burn offering made by fire unto the Lord. Come on. So they shall wash their hands and their feet that they mm -hmm. die not. Come on. And it shall be a statute forever to them, even to him and to his seed throughout their generations. So now this goes into the washing, meaning you wash your behind. After you do that, watch what happens next. Read verse 22 now. We're going to read down. Come on. Moreover, the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Take thou also unto thee principal spices mm. of pure myrrh, 500 shekels and of sweet cinnamon half so much even 250 no. shekels and of sweet calamus 250 shekels so now the lord is saying listen you want to take these spices of pure man of sweet cinnamon okay sweet calamus okay read and of cassia 500 shekels read after the shekel of the sanctuary and of oil Olive and hen. You read, come on. And thou shalt make it an oil of holy ointment. You see that thing? You shall make an oil of holy ointment. This oil right here, you are going to anoint yourself with it. So you bath, the most high God says, okay, this is the lotion. And I'm going to give you the ingredients that you're going to use to make a lotion that will smell good. You see that thing? So Israel didn't come up with this stuff. Go ahead. An ointment compound after the art of the apocalypse. Meaning what? It must also be like a perfume. Not only are you going to anoint yourself with the oil, with the mixture of these spices, guess what? You're also going to make a perfume over and above that. Right? An ointment compound after the art of the apothecary. Mm -hmm. It will be an holy oil, anointing oil. It shall be an holy anointing oil. Come on. And thou shalt anoint the tabernacle of the congregation therewith. Mm -hmm. And the ark of the testimony. Read. And the table and all his vessels. And the candlestick and his vessels. And the altar of incense. So this goes into your house. Meaning your house must smell good. Read. Because this was for the temple. Now we are the temple. So that means your body. Because remember. All of this that we're reading here is at the table, his vessels, the candlestick, his vessels, and the altar of incense. We no longer have the, the temple is no longer standing. Who's the temple? That you now. we the temple. So all this oil must be, you must anoint yourself with it. Read. And the altar of burnt offering with mm -hmm. all the vessels and the laver and his foot. Read. And thou shalt sanctify them. Thou shalt they, what? And thou shalt sanctify them. Remember, we the temple. The temple is no longer standing. Read. That they may be most holy. Mm -hmm. Whatsoever touches them shall be holy. Whatsoever touches them shall be holy. Go ahead. And thou shalt anoint Aaron and his sons. You see that thing? Thou shalt anoint Aaron and his sons. Meaning what? Brothers and sisters also coming. Brothers coming into the congregation, they also must be anointed, meaning you must be taught how to bath, how to anoint yourself with sweet, good smelling, sweet savor, as it is written in the Bible. Go ahead. And thou shalt anoint Aaron and his sons and consecrate them, mm -hmm. that they may minister unto me in the priest's office. You see that thing? That they may minister unto me in the priest's office. Read on. That's it on that. That's it on that. That's it on that. That goes into us for the men. Let's deal with the sisters now. Give me Esther 2 verse 12. Esther chapter 2 verse 12. Watch this. The book of Esther chapter 2 verse 12. Go ahead. 
Now when every maid's turn was come to go in to King Ahasuerus, after that she had been twelve months, mm -hmm. to the man of women, for so were the days of their purifications accomplished, to wit six months with oil of myrrh, mm -hmm. and six months with sweet odors, Come on. and with other things for the purifying of the woman. So guess what? This is when the women were being purified so that one of them can be the king, can be the what? Can be the wife of the king. But you see what they did? It says, guess what? It says six months, it says what? The days of purification to wait. Six months with oil of myrrh. They bathed themselves with oils of myrrh for the first six months. The other six months, it says what? Sweet odors with other things for the purify of the women. So they smell good. Mm. Give me Jury 10 verse 3. Jury chapter 10 verse 3. The book of Jury chapter 10 verse 3. Come on. And pulled off the sackcloth which, which she had on and put off the garments of a widowed mm -hmm. washed her body all over with water. Stop right there. What did she do? And washed her body all over with water. And washed her body all over with water. Sisters, wash your behind. Wash your wash, wash, wash your body all over with water. Don't wash like a cat. You understand? You be what you washing like a chihuahua. What the hell is this? Read that thing again. The hell is this? Mm -hmm. And pulled off the sackcloth which she had on. And put off the garments of a widow. Read. And washed her body all over with water. Stop right there. Don't be washing like a cat. Don't do a, a whole bath. That's what they call it. A whole bath. You know how holes wash? These holes. They stand in front of the mirror. They just put their leg on top of the sink. And they just take the, the bath lappy. Wash. And then perfume. Hmm? That's what they do. Sisters, don't, be, don't take a whole bath because we're going to smell your coochie through the perfume. Read the thing again. The book of Jury, chapter 10, verse 3. Go ahead. And pulled off the sackcloth which she had on mm -hmm. and put off the garments of a widow. Read. Washed her body all over with water. And washed her body all over, all over from head to toe with water. Okay? Not with saliva. Don't be doing, mm -mm. don't wash with saliva. Go ahead. And anointed herself with precious ointment. You see that thing? She's following the example of the men. You see what the most high God says? The most high God says, listen, wash yourself in Exodus 30 and anoint yourself with perfume and I'm gonna and anointing oil that you smell good. Okay? So guess what? That's the same thing going on here. Wash your body all over with water and anointed herself with precious ointment, come on. And braided the hair of her head. Is that, and hold on, she braided the hair of her head. She did not have head light. She still had hair. She, never, she did not have alopecia because she has, and braided the hair of her head. That means she had hair for her to braid. Go ahead. And put on a tire upon it. She put on a head right? red. And put on her garments of gladness. He dressed nice, read. Wherewith she was clad during the life of Manasseh, her husband. I want you to I want you to see something in the next verse. Keep going. And she took sandals upon her feet. He took sandals upon her feet. Remember, in verse 3, she washed her body all over with water. That's why some sisters cannot wear sandals because their feet, they look like a chicken's feet. What the hell? Go ahead. And put about her her bracelets mm. and her chains. Brace. And rings, Come on. And her earrings and all her ornaments. Mm. And decked herself bravely to allow the eyes of all men that should see her. Now that's beautiful right there because our foremother Judith had a plan. Give me Proverbs chapter 7 verse 16. Proverbs. Let's deal with the bed sheets. Let's deal with where the sisters must, must, must sleep. I'm going to show you something here. Okay. Watch this. Because we read this all the time. But, you know, the most I open the spirit. So there's other things I'm seeing here. Read that. Proverbs 7 verse 16. 
the book of Proverbs, chapter 7, verse 16. Go ahead. I have decked my bed with coverings of tapestry, mm -hmm. with carved works with fine linen of Egypt. He says, I deck my bed with coverings of tapestry, with carved works and fine linen of Egypt. Bed sheets, read on, clean bed sheets, read. I have perfumed my bed with myrrh. I perfumed my bed with myrrh, go ahead. Aloes and mm. cinnamon. Mm. That means the bed will smell good, the room smell good, go ahead. Watch this. Come, let us take our fill of love until mm. the morning. Come on. Let us solace ourselves with love. So now, once the bed is clean and the sheets are clean and all that, they smell good with mayo, aloes, and cinnamon. It says, now it says, come, let us take our fill of love until the morning. Let us solace ourselves with love. This right here, you deal with your husband, you deal with your wife and all that. The bed must be smelling good. Now watch this. Give me Song of Solomon 4, verse 5. Hmm. Song of Solomon chapter 4, verse 5. Don't forget what our former Judith was doing. She was her body all over with water. She decked herself. She anointed herself, then decked herself. And dressed in. She looked bare to the bone. Okay. Now, here it says, um, let us solace ourselves with lust. Watch this. Give me wisdom of Solomon. I mean, Song of Solomon 4, 5. Watch this. Stop. Now, we, we're taking a step back after she washed her body all over with water and anointed herself with precious ointments and all that. Here's what happens next when they solace themselves with love. Go ahead. Song of Solomon, chapter 4, verse 5. Come on. Thy two breasts are like two young roes that are twins, mm. which feed among the lilies. It says, Thy two breasts are like the two young roes that are twins which feed among the lilies. Listen, sisters. No man is going to be doing this to your, your breast and all that because this is a love song. It, it also goes into the laws of God. But this also goes into men and women. It says, thy two breasts are like two young roes that are twins, which feed among the lilies. A man is not going to do this with you when you are wearing keeper some with my mind. What the hell is this? Hmm? When you, your feet are smelly, that's not going to happen, okay? If you did not wash your body all over with water. Keep going. Until the day break. Until the morning. And the shoulders flee, and the shadows flee away. And the shadows flee away, meaning the sun is coming out, right? I will get me to the mountain of myrrh. Stop right there. Hold on a second. I will do what now? I will get me to the mountain of myrrh. This mountain of myrrh is talking about your vagina. It says, I will get me to the mountain of myrrh. That means it must smell like myrrh. Remember what we read in Isaiah 316? No, 316, right? Or 17, it says, instead of a, no, 24, instead of a sweet smell, they shall be a stink. Guess what? The sweet smell is the myrrh. Mm. Read verse 6 again. Song of Solomon chapter 4, verse 6. Read. Until the day break mm. and the shadows flee away. Come on. I will get me to the mountain of man. I will get me to the mountain of man. Here you are. You got a smelly coochie. You want the man to get to the mountain of man. No, no, that's not the mountain of man. Mm -mm. That is not the mountain of, that's the mountain of tuna. The man is not going to go down there. Go ahead. And to the hill of frankincense. And to the hill of frankincense. Keep going. Thou art all fair, my love. There is no spot in thee. Thou art all fair, my love. There is no spot in thee. Jump down to the ten. Watch this. This is when you solace yourself with love. On clean bed sheets, you wash your body all over with water. You've anointed yourself with precious smelling ointment. Read. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 4, verse 10. Mm -hmm. How fair is thy love, my sister, my Go spouse. Ahead. Come on. How much better is thy love than wine? Read. And the smell of thine ointments than all spices. Is it, and the smell of thine ointments than all spices. Because you wash your body all over with water. 
and you anointed yourself. Now it says, your smell, the smell of the ornament than all spices, meaning smells better than spices. Keep going. Thy lips, O oh my spouse, drop as the honeycomb. Hold on a second. It says, thy lips, O oh my spouse, drop as the honeycomb. Sisters, don't brush their teeth. They're on floors and none of that. Mm. Your lips are not going to smell like a honeycomb. Go ahead. Honey and milk are under thy tongue. Honey and milk is not going to be under your tongue. Go ahead. And the smell of thy garments is like the smell of Lebanon. This is some heavy stuff right here. Keep going. I'm not going to get into the details of this stuff. Keep going. A garden enclosed is my sister, mm. my spouse. A spring shut up, mm. a fountain sealed. Go ahead. Thy plants are an orchard of pomegranates. That's po no, no, read that right. Read that right. The hell is this? Read that verse again, verse 13. Son of Solomon, chapter 4, verse 13. Mm -hmm. Thy plants are an orchard of pomegranates. Pomegranates. Go ahead. With pleasant fruits, mm. camp, campfire, and campfire, campfire and spike nut. With spike nut. Go ahead. Spike nut with saffron. These are all going into fruits. You know, smelly, beautiful, smelly wild fruits and all that. That smells good. Go ahead. Calamus and cinnamon. That goes into spices. Read. With all trees of frankincense, myrrh and aloes, mm. with all the chief spices. Watch the next verse. Keep going. A fountain of gardens, mm. a well of living waters, and streams of Lebanon. Oh, praise to the most high God. Oh, praise. Oh, praise to the Lord. Oh, praise to the Lord for this thing right here. Listen, the Bible is a true book. The Bible is a true book. Okay, now let me see if I want to end this just like that. Let me not mess this up. Let me see. Hold on a second. Woo, that is beautiful. Mm. Oh, yes. Here's one. Here's one. I'm going to touch on this. I do want to touch on this thing right here. Um, um, we also going over what causes growing cells in all people. Both men and women. Let's deal with no, 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 not this way. The diet. Read that. Diet. Mm -hmm. Eating some foods can temporarily affect the way your body smells. Come on. This includes the smell of your sweat or urine. Mm, that means toxins in your body. Toxins. Okay. Read that. Read that thing again. Diet. Eating some foods can temporarily affect the way your body smells. Mm -hmm. This includes the smell of your sweat or urine. You see that thing? It says eating some foods can temporarily affect the way your body smells. This includes the smell of your sweat or urine. Mm. That means uric acid. Sweat. That means toxins in your system because you don't exercise. Okay, come on. Foods that may cause strong body smells include asparagus, mm -hmm. garlic, onion, chili, vinegar, marinated fish. Stop right and, there. Whoa, 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 whoa. Marinated what? Marinated fish. By the way, this is cold way to mean the coochie down there. Yeah. Because of the pan. Read that part again. Marinated fish. Marinated fish. Go ahead. And fermented milk products. And fermented milk products. So guess what? Give me that in 2nd Exodus 9. Okay, 2nd Exodus 9. Read verse 24. 2nd book of Exodus chapter 9 verse 24. Come on. But go into a field of flowers. Where no house is built it, and eat only the flowers of the field. Mm -hmm. Taste no flesh, drink no wine, but eat flowers only. 
but eat flowers only. So the Lord is telling Ezra, he said, listen, don't fast, but I want you for seven days to go into a field of flowers, a garden of flowers, where no house is built, eat only the flowers of the field, taste no flesh, don't eat meat, drink no wine, don't drink alcohol, but eat flowers only for seven days. Go ahead. And pray unto the highest continually. Mm -hmm. Then will I come and talk with thee. Pray. So I went my way into the field, which is called Ardeth. Mm -hmm. Like as he commanded me, and there I sat among the flowers, and did eat of the herbs of the field, and the meat of the same satisfied. So he ate the flowers of the field, the herbs of the field. He says, and the meat of the herb satisfied him. You see this thing right here? So what's happening here, the Lord is telling Ezra, said, listen, I want you to detox. I want you to get rid of the toxins in your systems and all that. This is what, this is what it means to detox. While you're detoxing, pray to the highest that the Lord will, get, will make sure that you get rid of those what They get rid of the toxins in your system. You understand? So that also, not only that, but your urine to be clear. Your urine to be clean. That's what the Most High God, the Most High God is giving us a way of what? Detoxing. This is detox of the Most High right here. Okay? So certain foods that we eat, they will either make us smell good or smell bad. Okay? Understand that thing. That's what the Lord is saying. Okay? That's medicine, by the way. Give me that in Sarah 38. That's medicine. That's medication. Okay? Sarah chapter 38. Read verse 4. The book of Ecclesiasticus, chapter 38, verse 4. Read. Right? The Lord hath created medicines out of the earth. Mm -hmm. And he that is wise will not abhor them. He that is wise will not abhor them. The Lord created medicine out of the earth. He that is wise will not abhor them. Those made that medication, that's the earth of the sea. Like Ezra was commanded to go in 2 Ezra 9, verse 26. Okay. Read that thing again. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 38, verse 4. Come on. The Lord hath created medicines out of the earth. Mm -hmm. And he that is wise will not abhor them. And if you are wise, you will not abhor them. That's what the most High God is saying. So one of the best ways to get rid of the order between your legs, both for both men and women, there's certain foods you must avoid. Okay? There's certain foods you must eat to make sure that you are what? There's toxins that are released from your body. You understand? You must exercise. Diet and ex diet, exercise, and good hygiene. Wash your behind. The most High God has all the answers. We just need to apply ourselves so we can what we can improve. And all of these things, they can be fixed. These are fixable stuff. These are fixable things. We can fix these things. Okay. We must apply this thing. That's where the Lord. So, brothers and sisters, I'm gonna end the class right there in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ. Okay, let's break bread. I'm gonna end the class right there. For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he brake it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup, when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood, this do ye as oft as ye drink it, in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread, and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread, and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily, shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread, and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause, many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. In the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Let's give the most I hand for that. Okay.